Here we are, another episode of the artistry of, but who are we brought to you by? Well, my friends, we had to bring out the big guns today. We are brought to you by Weebly.com. That is correct. You've been wanting a website for I don't know how long, but you kept saying, look, man, I can't write code. It's so expensive. I don't know how, where to host my website. I don't know what to do. Well, go to Weebly. Dot com. Matter of fact, so you so that I can get some credit, go to bowmiles.com, click on the Weebly link, and get started today. Hosting, they will host your website. You can develop a website, or, or my friends, you can have someone else develop it for you. You check, you say, okay, look, this is what I want. I want my website like Facebook. I want whatever. They'll get it done. You give it the uh, green light. You give them the, the little bit of that cash, my friends. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then you're ready to rock and roll. Weebly.com. But if you want to support me, go to bowmiles.com. Click on the Weebly link like some of you have been doing. Thank you. We are also brought to you by fidlu.com. Yes, that is right. You felt like you was a musician all your life, okay? But you never had that instrument that just said, he is the man or she is the woman. Well, my friends, go to Fidlu.com, pick up a bass. That is correct. He has gorgeous axes waiting, waiting for a home. We, we could do one of those sad puppy commercials, you know, where, where they do the, uh, the animals and they have the sad music. And, and you can just see all the pretty basses just waiting for you to purchase that, that need a home. And we're also doing the Fidlu Challenge. You can't even play a bass buy the base, put it on your back, walk through the mall, you're going to like how you look, my friends. Trust me. People are going to look at you like, wow, he played a base. Wow, she a base player? No, but they're still going to look at you. <laughs> Go to fitloot.com, purchase a base today. Last, but definitely not least, I'm not, gonna pr- I'm not even going to uh, advertise myself. Go to advancedbkj.com. That is right. You've been getting pushed and punked your whole life. And you, was, and you watched that first UFC. You said, man, if I could just learn some jujitsu, like Hoist Gracie, this, this would stop. This would just, I would put this away. Well, you didn't do it back in 94, but you do have today. Go to advancedbkj.com and get started on your jujitsu. Brazilian, my friends. Yes, we had Mar- Marcelo Minotauro, a legend in the game. He was here just the other week. It was an awesome seminar, packed with a lot of information, a lot of techniques. Go to Advanced BKJ and get started today, my friends. And it's only one other thing to do. Cue the music. Let me introduce you to Bowmiles, a unique and likable guy. Everyday life, friends and family makes up the artist. What's that? What's that? Oh, guys, I, I have the pleasure and the honor of introducing to you guys our guest for today, which... Who that is? You already know because you guys read it. You read, you read the title, so you know who it is, but let's say you cannot pronounce it. Then, my friends, I am here to help you. So we have Larod Smalls and C. Anthony Parker... Strong entrepreneurs in America that's doing their thing, and they're here to help us, to guide us, kind of give us their take on things. Look, I'm sit back and relax because you you better believe you better believe that I am, and we're not editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, see Anthony Parker. What's up, man? What's up? Hey, what's, what's up? going on? What's going on? I'm glad to be here. So, uh, I, I know you got into uh, all type. You, you're into all types of ventures, but uh, just take us from, take us back. You know, 
what what, what motivated you to want to make money? Right, or yeah, man, what's, what is it? <laughs> okay, great. Um, and I'm and first and foremost, I'd like to give it back to you all, uh, just for simply having me on on this podcast today. Uh, it's truly a pleasure, and I don't take it lightly. I'm very humbled, and uh, just just to be honest with you, I come from the projects. Very, very, very humble beginnings. And I uh, fell first grade. I was actually considered mentally educated challenged. I was in special education, didn't graduate high school, neither did I go to college. But one thing I did have was a burning desire to be successful. Now, I don't know how many people are listening to this podcast, but I'm here to tell you, if you have a burning desire to be successful, you can be an entrepreneur. And from, from the perspective of corporate America, yes, corporate America failed me. You know, I, I had a... Uh, simply had a uh, paper route and worked for about five weeks in one particular moment, and uh, they only paid me a dollar and ninety-seven cents for five weeks worth of work. And I simply, I was devastated. I was probably about maybe fourteen, fifteen at the time. I was devastated. Why? Because I simply did not understand how in the world that could happen. But they told me simply this: they said that you know your 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 clients did not pay, or your your customers did not pay. And I said to myself, at that point in time, it brought out the beast in me, if you will. I said, I would never, ever let someone else control my income. So from that point forward, I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur and started out with my entrepreneurship at the age of 17 uh, with a, with a uh, lawn care service. Now, I like to call it a lawn care service, but simply I just started out with a lawnmower and a weed eater. And uh, that birthed uh, exactly what I've been doing for the past 16 years, which is a car dealership, because I went to a local auction, purchased a vehicle. And at that point, I started um, actually not knowing what I was doing, but I was participating in multiple streams of income. I would do my uh, lawn care service business full time and then actually do the car sales uh, on the side part time. And I realized that my part time income was exceeding my full time income with my with my lawn care service. So I decided to go into business at the age of 19. Uh, And I tell you, people thought I was crazy. (laughs) Age of 19, I wanted to open up a car dealership, but with that burning desire, I said, hey, it's possible. If it's possible for anyone, it's possible for me. So I decided at that point to uh, open it up at the age of 19 with one vehicle. By the time I was 24, uh, I had four dealerships running simultaneously. By the time I was 27, I added a body shop, mechanic shop, and detail shop to my repertoire. But for every up, there's a down. For every success, there's a failure. You know, I made, um, you know, over a million dollars before I was 28 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that point, you know, the economy failed me. Why do I say that? Because the recession came in. And while the recession was coming in, people were losing their jobs. They were losing their homes. They said if there was an extra three to $500 that was interjected, if a person had an opportunity to bring an extra three to $500 in their home, they would literally have, you know, not have foreclosed their homes. So, I'm I'm open, always open to new opportunity. I like to share opportunity. And so with that being said, I had to close down three of my dealerships. I needed an opportunity. And it came through a barber, a friend of mine. He was a barber. He simply said, are you open to new opportunity? And I said, absolutely. Not, not only am I open, but I need an opportunity. So that birthed what I've been doing for the past six going on seven years. And that's just teaching entrepreneurship. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Man, that that is that so, is one story, man. So you would buy cars, flip them, buy another one, two, three more, flip those, and just kept going. Absolutely. You would go to auctions, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, Ohio, all around the area. Today? Yes. Okay. Now, when uh, when you first started, you know, did you think about? <clears throat> Just, okay, how much money? Did you have a goal? Like, look, I want to at least make this much. Or was it just like, look, I just love I just love the thrill of just, you know, providing for people. And I'm sure once it got out, like, man, yay, yeah, man, you know, Parker, man, he, he, he had those cars, man. You know, I would like this. So, like, when that started to happen, I mean, did, was that kind of like fuel? Or did you, like I said in the beginning, did you already have like a goal? Like, look, you know, I really want to make this much from doing the car thing or what? That is a great question. Um, I fueled my fire uh, with being an entrepreneur from actually growing up where I grew up at. 
you know, growing up in a project, seeing things happening, um, seeing people do the wrong things. <clears throat> and I said, well, within the next five years, how much further ahead will I be versus my peers? So that's what fueled that's what fueled me, because I wanted to see the you know, the distance I would have in five years. And then I told myself, you know, five years, making 5000 a month, that would be okay for a 19-year-old. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would be all right for me. <laughs> Man. So, like, uh, did you did you grow up here, or what, where where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up here in Charleston, West Virginia. Oh, all right. And, uh, like... Did you, I'm sure just growing up here and growing up in the projects, you're just going to be, you're going to see that drug game, you know, like it's going to be in your face. Eventually your friends, you know, at age 13, 14, whatever, they're going to start getting into it, you know, and uh, you said that you was, you didn't do very well in school, you know, so was that, was that an open door for you, you know, like. Did somebody say, like, hey, man, you know, we can do this? Or, um, you know, I also know you're a musician. Did that keep you away from it? You know, how how did that help? You know, how did you navigate through that terrain? I got some basis for sale, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be really honest with you, and I'll be very candid and very vulnerable on, the, on this podcast. I did get into that realm, you know, following after my peers for four years. And I found out very quickly that I was not good at it, oh. you know. It takes and a tenacious person to be out there 24-7 slinging, and everybody can't sling. And if you ain't carrying, if you ain't got no thug in you, you can pack your bag and go back home because mm-hmm. it will bury you. Yeah, man, I remember, like, my story because I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and, uh, you know, rough. Same type of story, you know, not really um, good at school. Like, school didn't pique my interest. Like, I didn't see value in school. I didn't see value in education because that was hidden, you know. And it's like, that's like a great trick. And it's not, it's not a white-black thing. It's just more of an of a upper-class, wealthy thing. And it doesn't matter what color you are. But once you get up there, it's like, look... I want my son to follow in my footsteps, you know. So if the competition, if you're the competition, and I don't care what color you are, I want my kids, you know, on this track. I need to get you the best way <laughs> for me to ensure this, the success of my kids is to derail you, you know. Ooh. So then it's like derail you and your kids, you know. It's like, look, man, I mean. Look. Cutthroat. Right. Right. Cutthroat. Survival really, of the fittest. Right, right, because, you know, look, I'm already going up against wealthy people, you know, and they're kids, and now I got you trying to climb up. It's like, look, man. Look, Grabbing look, the I, barrel, man. <laughs> it's like, look, man, I don't I don't need that. So the, what you find, you know, is you just find the easiest way to prevent that is just to shape it to where you're not even paying attention to education. Like, you know you're here, okay, you can become a doctor, you can become a lawyer, they make money, they're successful in the community. You know, like their their titles mean something, but you don't see them in your neighborhood, you know, and it's like, yeah, what's the point, you know? So I, I can relate to a lot of that, and I remember uh, thinking, like, look, man, I'm going to get in the drug game, you know, but I didn't know anybody who was in, you know. Now, the neighborhood kingpin... He was a, a friend of mine's uncle, and before he put all my friends on, we got put out. We got evicted from our home, and I had to go move on in South Baltimore with my aunt, you know, so then that was that. It created that disconnect, but before he put the neighborhood on, I remember we, uh, we, we had talked about buying some drugs, so we was just going to flip it like, you know, look, we'll buy an eight ball and just try to just, you know, make some money off of that and just keep letting it grow, you know, then you get a quarter and so forth. But uh, we gave our money to a junkie. Like, <laughs> so, you, like, everybody, I'm, like. I'm going to run and get you some stuff. <laughs> you, so you, you already know where here. this is going. You already know. <laughs> Y'all, everybody in here, all of our listeners who, from that environment, you already know where this story is going. So, I can get uh, you some crack, too, man. Come on. <laughs> you didn't trust me. 
<laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, so we gave him the drug. He was like, "Look, you know, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go down here. I'm a cop for you guys." So we like, uh, all right, you know, I'm probably like twelve, thirteen, you know. And he a grown man, you feel me? And uh, so we we gave him the money, and I would say probably like an hour, maybe an hour later, he comes back, and the, his, his knuckle was uh, like scuffed up. He was like, "Man, I got jumped," you know. <laughs> And uh, but we felt we were gullible, so we uh, we fell for it. It's like, yo, where at? We, like, look, I went down here, so we we went, you know, like, look, I mean, we didn't uh, we didn't have any guns at that time at that age, but look, we was ready to fight. Like, look, nah, nah we're going back. I don't care who who did it, you know. And uh, we went, give us back our money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we uh, can you hear? Uh, as long as um. It might do that just from the interference and stuff, but don't worry. Uh, as long he'll check, and once you start, he'll yeah. check and make sure that your levels are good. So, so don't worry. Yeah. Right so you're coming from this box right here. Right, right, and Fid kicking it around. So. No, don't put that on <laughs> me. Now. But let me interject. Um, education today is a tool to help you get a job or find a way to make money. As long as you can read and write and read contracts. That's all you need to know how to do. Because if you're making money, college ain't for everybody. LeBron James didn't go to college. You know, they, they talk about him. You know, he's just a high school basketball, basketball player. Man don't have to never work again in his life. So don't, don't have no druthers about not having an education. It's, it's about being able to provide for yourself and your family. Absolutely. For me... I'm a, I'm a licensed professional engineer, five years of college, 36 years of, of practice. Where am I at? What do I have to show for all my efforts? So what, what, what works for you is what works for you. Education gave me a living, but other than that, it gave me a living. It didn't make me wealthy because I depended on somebody else. You know, and as long as you... Those who pass out will never give you more than what they have. As long as you work for somebody, you'll never make as much as they do because you're making all the money for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Right, you know. man. And that's the whole thing. Like Even just the power of being an entrepreneur, it puts you in a position where now, look, you can hand out the jobs. It's like your income is only limited by your vision, you know, what you see. If you if you want a Bentley, you want a billion dollars, then okay, think about it. Look, get in there. How are you going to get it? Are, are you going to do this, that, or whatever? And luckily, you know, we have you guys here to kind of share some of this stuff with us. Uh, Larod, and what's your what's your what's what's the deal with you? Brother? What's what's up? <laughs> what's up, man? Come yeah, on. man. I'm like it's like double dutch. You know, you have the girls <laughs> play double dutch. You just you just waiting for your turn. You yeah. jump in. <laughs> I, but I'm listening in. What an engaging conversation, man. Like, this truly, this, this, it does my heart good to be in an environment just talking about this because it really is my life's work, uh, talking about entrepreneurship. Uh, I've been so blessed to have traveled the country, you know, even into the Caribbean, talking about what entrepreneurship really is at the root and how anybody could participate, you know, from the simplest things. And one of my mentors says this, if a, if a kid has two bikes, he's got one to ride and one to rent. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, everybody could be an entrepreneur. And uh, it, it's been my story. Uh, like Mr. Parker said, and I, I, so eloquently he shared his story. Uh, I went to college, and I've kind of followed your dream, Fed, the same concept of going to school to get a degree and then use that degree to create this dream life you know that was told to me through the, the career of corporate america right right and i've af- seen it done it yeah i mean i haven't seen many you know do it in my neighborhood you know so but i followed it anyway right you know you follow the herd that's what animals do right you just follow the group and i went off to college i got this bachelor's degree and i came home and i started working on wall street and after five years my company merged with another company and when they did, they eliminated my entire division. So 
in one fell swoop. Just, just to get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would have loved to think that, too, you know, because, you know, we always want to believe that somebody's got it out for us, right? But, no, it was for themselves, you know. It, mm-hmm. it was all about the, the bottom line. Cutting the fat off. Yeah. And to, uh, to them, we were overpaid and underworked. You know? Expendable. Yeah. You know, we were the Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, you know, of <laughs> – of uh, of our company, so I at that point I had to make a, a decision whether I wanted to go back to work, you know, like many of my colleagues were going to do, or I was going to actually start something new. Now I had no field of experience in entrepreneurship. I never owned my own business. My family never owned a business before, but I knew, hey, listen, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. So I risked everything I had, you know, all the savings that I had, and I decided I was going to start a business. My very first business was an online supermarket, actually, um, sending care packages to correctional facilities. So, you know, I don't know if you guys have any experience with that, but when you send packages into correctional facilities, you know, there's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of involvement there, right? So because I figured out how to make it work and I did it, I started to create a business around it. Right. I was looking for this service myself. I didn't find anybody who was doing that. So I decided to do it myself. And, um, you know, it panned out after three years. Well, let me not say this. We struggled for a long time. You know, we struggled for three years. It was in my basement. I was a newlywed man. I almost lost my marriage trying to build this business. But because we were diligent and vigilant, you know, before you know it, uh, we did some interviews on MTV and BET, kind of found out what we oh. were doing. And then, boom, you know, just a little bit of media Jumped. coverage. Yeah, a little oh. bit of coverage. You never know. You never know. That's why I tell people, especially entrepreneurs, always be ready. Yeah. You got to be ready. Do not put it out there unless you unless you want to work. Yeah, well, cause, I, cause you I, I, I would have to agree rat with trap, that. They're going to come running. I would have to agree with that. Like, you know, some, sometimes I've seen businesses that, um, you know, could end up taking on too much business and end up failing right. because of that as well. So you got to be scalable. And we went through that as well in our business. We, we had way more production than we could handle. And uh, we ended up taking on a lot of money and taking on a lot of debt. And that ultimately would, would have been one of the downfalls that we had in that business. But along that escape. Uh, I built five local shipping stores in my in New York in mm-hmm. Brooklyn, so I owned five shipping stores at the same time, and that online supermarket. So having twenty two employees, multiple locations, man, it was when we were really rocking. It was a tremendous thing, but in two thousand and eight, the economy took a huge shift, and I suffered. Um, but not being prepared and being an early entrepreneur with not no mentors or guidance. You know, I made a lot of bad decisions. And entrepreneurs should always be seeking good counsel. Uh, I tell entrepreneurs that. Get you a mentor. Get you a guide. Somebody who's been through it. And because I didn't have it, I learned a lot of lessons there. A lot of lessons. The hard hard way. Hard. It was a hard way. You know, so hard that I ended up in bankruptcy court. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, here's the trick, though. People don't understand. Once you become a millionaire, you may fail. But you know how to get back there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, we generated uh, three quarters of a million dollars in three years and well over a million dollars before I was 30. And we had we had done it in a short period of time. My pastor says this all the time. He says that your talents can take you where your character can't sustain you. So because I had not developed to who I needed to be yet, mm-hmm. I couldn't stay sustain such an amazing thing that my talent had developed developed us into. So uh, recovering from that, I found an industry that truly changed the way that I do business and what I preach and talk about. I, uh, I've been able to author a book. I wrote a book called Present Like a Pro mm-hmm. for Networkers. It's available on Amazon and Kindle and Audible. Um, an amazing journey through this industry called network marketing. Uh, it's a micro-franchised way 
of introducing people to a product or a service where ordinary people become the marketing, sales, and distribution of a service, letting the company, the host company, handle all of the paperwork, all of the business, all of the logistics, and we do what we do best. Same thing we've been doing since the since we were kids in the sandbox is just sharing information, talking to people, developing relationships, building friendships. And because of that community, we create commerce. And there's no there's no limit. It's 100 percent scalable. There's no nepotism, favoritism, sexism. None of those things apply. All you've got to do is produce. And when you produce, you you uh, develop a business. And I'm so proud of it. I'm excited for it. And I, you know, I had an opportunity to build organizations of over 5,000 people and, and um, you know, create six-figure incomes for myself and my family. So I'm excited. I'm super excited to share that with you guys. Man, that, that is that's crazy. Like, I can't even think, you know, just I can't even, it's like, man, I can't even wrap my head around that, you know, just that scope. Because like you said, you know, it's about having that mentor. It's about having that person. Because if you, you know, you jump into the pool. Because, I, I, man, I tell a story about. Uh, Staying in shallow end. <laughs> man, like, uh, you know how, like, it, when you learn how to swim, like, old school, they just throw you in. You know, look, yeah. you either going to swim or you going to Sink die. or swim. Right. And I, I remember. Staying in shallows. Like, I remember, man, I was watching, uh, I was watching, you know, cartoons. I'm probably, like, seven or something younger than that. And I was watching cartoons and. You know, the, the superhero, he's swimming, you know, but it, he's a robot. So he just like he doesn't move. He just like glide across in the water. Right. So that's my idea of swimming at, you know, five. I just get in and I just, you know, glide in the water. But you're saying. Right. My dad, he, he in that old school. Look, I'm just throw him in there, you know, but I didn't have a concept of flailing my arms, kicking <laughs> like my idea of swimming was, look, you just get in. And you know, like, <laughs> glad. <laughs> so he th- he throws me in, and, and you know, of course, the water goes up my nose, is in my mouth. I'm like, boop, boop. yeah, you know. <laughs> at that point, I just open my eyes up. I see everybody just like swimming, and I'm like, oh crap! Like, yo, it's not that easy. It's not as easy as it looks. From yeah, on on that cartoon where the guys, that robot is just gliding in the water but you know what i have to say about that and i I talk about this all the time is that as kids we're at the biggest point of our lives right you're never going to be bigger than you are as a kid because as a kid you believe everything is possible you know i've got a scar on my head that still proves it when i was a kid i threw a towel inside the back of my t-shirt and jumped off of a washing machine thinking that would make me fly right see as kids there's no limits we can we can do anything, we can be anything, everything is possible. But until people show and people tell you that it's not possible, that's when there's a failure. Once we once you hold on a moment. Yeah, yeah, you could you can take it, man. Go ahead. We're, nah, I don't know why this thing is right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you take it that. Right? <laughs> once once you get older, you know, <laughs> the, you got bills, you got the busyness, you got kids to take care of, you've got all these things. We get smaller as we get older. Right. As we get older, our dreams start to shrink. We start to shrink our dreams into our paychecks. We start to shrink our visions about what's possible into what we can see with our eyes. No longer just dreaming and wanting what we want because we want it. When I talk to adults that have been tattered and they've been through 30, 40 years of work, they've been so beaten down and their their view is so myopic at that point, they can only see what it is that they can achieve through day-to-day work. They no longer just have the optimism of just wanting something because they want it. It's always going to be constricted into what they think is tangible they call it reality well that's not reality well i mean you know nothing was reality that didn't exist when the dreamer had it in their dream and then created it you know right and if we could get our young people to tap into entrepreneurship at the earlier parts Mm -hmm. in their lives Mm -hmm. when they still have that dreamer in them when they still have that passion and that fire and that belief that anything is possible you need to combine the fire of the young dreamer with the skills and the talents and the you know, the wherewithal of the old entrepreneur and marry that together. And that's what's going to create the generations in the future who's going to power great new businesses and really push through. That's what I believe. 
Right, right. And that's where I was going with that story. It's so uh, amazing that you were able to, you know, see it and take it home. But that's the whole idea. You know, like you got to have both. And as adults, even for our adult listeners, like, look, you know, I hope you guys are getting inspired to know, like, look, it's not over. You know, like you can still take uh, what little bit of hours you have. You know, sometimes when you when you're trying to get in shape, you got to be ready to to be in shape. You know, so it's like, all right, if you weigh four, four hundred fifty pounds, clearly you're not living like you're in shape. You know, so as you start to work out. You still have to conquer, okay, the mental aspect of it, you know. And I think even, you know, for some of our older listeners, and when I say older, I'm like, look, 20, you know, 20 on up. Because you guys, you're in a position where you can really make a difference in your life. So even if you're 20 years old, if you're listening, you know, look, now you can start to make those moves. Whereas, you know, somebody like me is like, man, you're young. Well, but... uh that ties back into what we talked about a little earlier, and that is that <clears throat> musicians learn everything they're going to learn while they're at home with their parents because they're free of responsibility, they're free of fear. And once they become adults and strike out there, they don't learn that much more about music. So if they didn't learn it while they were at home, all they're worried about now is when they're grown is making money off of that music ship. And it ain't the same. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You're right. You're yeah. right. It's the fear. Once we once we become, uh, you know, we're exposed to the world, we don't want to fail. And that fear of failure because of what society says or what people going to think about us or even just bruising ourselves. You know, if when we kids, we just run. And if we fall, it's OK. We just get up. You know what I mean? But as we get older, we know that fall hurts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, yo, I don't want to fall. I don't want anybody to see me fall. So I'm going to be more cautious. And because we're cautious, we don't stick our neck out. We don't put ourselves on the line. Because old girl going to make sure you, wait a minute, we got, we got, we got bills we got to pay. What you mean? What you mean you want to be a musician? <laughs> How many gigs a week you going to get? Right. You better take your butt to work. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, so many, it's, we, we find ourselves... And I tell my students all the time, like, look, what are you guys practicing? What are you developing? Because practice makes perfect, but practice makes this perfect is who pra- I am. Perfect practice makes perfect. But practice makes this is who you are. This is how you react in a situation. So if we're joining a basketball team, right, we're going to practice so that you know what to do in these situations. Okay, we're going to come down about a quarter of the way. You're going to go fade to the left or shoot to the right pull up, take the shot. Box know? out. Right. So, like, okay, we're going to practice this, right? Now, you're at home with your brother and your sister, and you are always bickering. you always yelling at each other. You always have, are in conflict. What are you practicing? Because what you're saying is when anger. you get... Right. Anger. You're, you're practicing uh, putting each other down, right? When you get into a relationship, when you get to a business, when you get into anything, those traits, those things that you're practicing at home, being negative... Uh, you know, putting people down, putting yourself down. That's what you're going to do. It's the same as if you, you're getting in the court. It's like you have a ball in your hand. Well, you know what to do. You can practice this. You know, and that's the thing is like if we can develop these habits to where, like you said, we're so afraid of falling, but in business and in life ventures, like look, look at that as an opportunity to to reflect and see see if you can overcome it. See if you can figure out a way that you don't fall, but you still run, you know, like figure out, you know, okay, can I shift my weight? Can I, is there anything that I can do to prevent me from falling as opposed to saying, you know what, I'm just not going to run over there. You know, like I see it, I see the buildings, I see the home that I want, but it's a lake. I can't swim. Well, I mean, I like, I like to think of it like, you know, I've got kids, right? I've got three kids and, uh, you know, last year, I really uh, spent some time with my son on bike riding, right? So it was like, all right, he's been saying he wanted to ride a bike, and, you know, we're going to go out and do this thing. So, you know, entrepreneurship is truly like riding a bike. You know somebody else is doing it. You know you can do it. But you don't read about it. You don't hear about it. You just do it, you know? So I couldn't 
tell him how to ride a bike in the living room. I couldn't give him a book on riding a bike. I had to go out and risk it and buy the bike before he ever did anything, right? So you buy the bike before he can ride a bike. And then the the best you can hope is that you're there to support them and you help them out. You prepare them for all little falls, but you know they're going to fall. And I hope they get back on that bike. That's because right. I just paid all that money for that bike, boy. So you getting back on that bike? <laughs> <laughs> if you got a good coach, that's exactly what they're going to do. A coach is going to be there to not do it for you, but to be there to support you with it and to push you. So I tell entrepreneurs like that: don't be afraid to, afraid to fall, and expect to fall. If you expect that you're going to fall, and it's okay, and you've got a great mentor, and you've got somebody willing to support you and talk you through it. And, uh, you know, get books. Even if you haven't, uh, you don't have a living mentor right there to be with, support you. Find somebody who's done it and read a few books. Get some uh, some expertise from afar. Go to some lectures. Uh, find somebody who can motivate you, inspire you, and encourage you when you fall. And, and that brings, uh, you know, just, just speaking on where you, where you said, you know, practice makes perfect. I have a different way, a style of thinking about that. My style of thinking of it is, is practice makes progress. Uh, the reason why, because we're always a work in progress. I don't care if you're Michael Jordan, the best basketball player that ever lived. You know, he has room for progress. Oh, he, he you know, would go an hour before practice and stay an hour after. Mm-hmm. So, so that's practice, right? That's practice. Practice. But, but that was extra practice. Yes. You had to go that one step above everybody else to stay that step above everybody else. And and the beautiful thing about it is we always are evolving or evolving. Yeah. We're evolving as a person. We're evolving as a business person. We're evolving as parents. You know, we're always evolving. And it's, it's just a matter of being able to practice that 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 evolution, if you will, of yourself. Right. And uh, and that w- that's what makes you the person that you are. But one thing I will say is we all have 24 hours in a day. Right. It's just Some what you do just with use it. Use it better than others. Yes, yes. And and I always agree, you know, there's there's a slight edge. There's a slight edge to everything that we do in life. You know, we we you know, like you said, Michael Michael Jordan, he would practice before and after. He had that slight edge yeah. over most players. And we have to have that same slight edge over our lives to, in our in our businesses to where we progress a lot faster than most will. That's why I gave myself a five year measure of my peers, because I wanted to have that slight edge. You know, what if a person is going to eat a salad versus a person eating pizza for a whole year? Will you see a difference in two weeks or a month? Yeah. Maybe not. But after a year or so, the person who eats salad, they look more leaner. They're in more con- better condition versus that person who ate pizza. Same thing with the reader. I was uh, listening to uh, uh, Jay-Z and also Warren Buffett. And, uh, you know, both of these gentlemen, they're, they're multi-billionaires. Mm-hmm. And Warren Buffett attributes his 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 being a billionaire by reading. Mr. Smalls just uh, just spoke about, spoke about reading. And he said what he would do at the age of 12, between the age of 12 and 15 years old, he read all of the books in his father's library. So now he knew how to invest money. Okay. Why? Because he learned. They said if you, stand, if you read enough books, you could stand up on those books and you would get taller and taller because your knowledge gets, gets, increases. So it's just a matter of, you know, being able to, and, and what, what he said was this that I thought was very uh, intriguing. He said by the time he was 15, he had the knowledge of 30 to 35-year-olds. So he had that slight edge, that leg up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he still reads, I, th- I think he says, six books um, a, a, a day. A day, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. But, well, here's you know, the beauty, though. You that's can why get, he is who he is. You can get everything on audiobooks now. So mm-hmm. you don't have to be able to read. Somebody else will read for you. Mm-hmm. So there's no excuse not to seek that knowledge that's out there, period. That's right. That's yeah. right. Man, I remember, I, I want to say, I picked up some books, and I read, I, like I read, uh, I want to say it was either Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I, I want to say that I read it, and then a friend of mine, he uh, made some copies of the audio book. And I would put them in my car, you know, and I would just, like, you know, listen to that. Just listen to it while I was driving. And it was bringing the same type of discipline that I developed in video games. Like, my my discipline for everything comes from my discipline in Street Fighter 2. Like, that, that's where I developed my discipline in Street Fighter 2. Because, uh, like, as a kid, it's the like... The game? Yes, the game. I was 11, right? I was 11. Like, the game probably came out, like, 
either 89 or it was around the time when I was 11. I don't know if it came out 91, but we had an arcade, you know. We had an arcade in the hood. Everybody would go there. And we would play. And eventually, like, you know, around still at 11, I got really good, like really good to where I was beating, like, adults and teenagers and stuff. So my dad, he would take me over his friend's house, and they would gamble on me, you know, like, look, you know, we'll play whatever for a round if, you know, <laughs> If Lil Bo beat you around, we get this. If he lose, I give up this, right? So so he would gamble on me, and I would play his friends, and I would just beat his friends, right? Papa needs some new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. So with, because, like, one, the first time it happened, I went there, and I, I was undefeated. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't lose. Like, they was like, man, like, yo, man, this little nigga, like, yo, man, you know, they just had that type of language. And, you know, it was just a good time. But I knew going back that they was going to be prepared, prepared for me. and ready. Mm -hmm. Right. And they was going to be ready. So what I did, I had the game on the Super Nintendo. I was like, look, to myself, I was like, I want to beat this game perfects every round. Like, that's so from the beginning to the end, never get touched, you know. And, like, that was my goal. Like, I had to do this. By next weekend, you know, because I, I need to be ready. And and that discipline just doing it over and over and over and over again. And when I when I got when I got hit, it was over. Like, you know, I played for perfects. It wasn't, you know, I'm gonna keep going, like, no, it's over, you know? And I just start again. And eventually I did it and I learned all the moves, like I just was really invested in the game, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay. I need to figure out all the moves. I need to figure out all the outcomes. I need to figure out the distance between the players, what I can do, at, at what distance in the game can they do, what can they do, what are their possibilities, you know. So it was just breaking down every, every possibility that I can think of and trying to recreate it, you know. And that, like that type of uh, discipline and those type of ethics, I just took to everything, you know what I mean. And I, it wasn't even like, I was good. Like, I didn't even become good in school until, like, college or high school, you know? But I'd already developed that Street Fighter uh, strategy, mm -hmm. and I just took it to whatever. And so no matter what, like, even in music, it's like, okay, learn all the chords, learn all the changes, you know, as many as you can, but develop a language so that, you know, you're using that language to communicate with whatever, you know what I mean? But, but, those, but that is what I learned in the game, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's... Like, even when I approach... You learn discipline. Right. And I learned, you know, look, you, uh, the scientific method, mm -hmm. you know, that's really what I learned in that game is, okay, discipline. come up, discipline. think of, uh, create some type of hypothesis and test it. And if it works, okay, if it doesn't, go back to the start drawing board. Again. Right, start over again. You know, so that's what I developed was the scientific method to help me, and that's what I use, you know, to... But the whole idea... It's like, look, you have to develop that somewhere, you know, so that you can use it. And you have to understand that you're going to have some pitfalls and setbacks, and you can't stop. When you fall off your bike, Daddy just bought this bike for me. He going to put my butt if I don't get back up there and ride. <laughs> <laughs> right. He, he didn't put them training wheels on like he's supposed to. <laughs> he think I'm a, a genius. I can't ride that here bike. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty about you telling that what, what you just told us is is simply this, um, and you use discipline, which is a great word because you have to discipline yourself for anything that you want to be successful at. But the root of success, a lot of people ask, well, you know, how do you truly become successful? What is the secret to success? And really, the secret to success is whatever you think about the most is what you become. Like you was thinking about that every single day. Right. And you became an expert at the video game, just like you've Street mastered Friday your two. craft yeah. with being a musician. So if anything in life that you want to do, whether it's business, whether it's personal, whatever it may be. 10,000 hours. Whatever you think about yeah, the most is what you become. Right. 10,000 hours. You so, play practice for 10,000 hours. You become that musician. <laughs> I got another 5,000 to go. Right, my brother. right. So I like, even gearing our minds up to like, look, man, I want to start this business. I want to, I want to do this type of thing. You know, uh, 
take my wealth or at least start to develop and to create some type of pathway that even if I do not achieve uh, that my children can can pick up right where I left off, you know, and, and, and hopefully that they can, you know, get into the, the promised land. You know, like what are some of those things that you guys – would, like some key things that you would say like, hey, man, you really want to develop, you know, this and this will kind of get you ready, you know, for whatever. Like, are well, there any type of key things that people that are uh, out of shape far wise is starting their business and, you know, starting to think about being on their own with their taking their finances into their own hands? Right. Now, that, that's awesome, too, because it's really the start. Right. And just like when you're working out. You know, I heard it. You got to gear yourself up first before you start doing it, right? You know, you don't go into the gym the very first day. You haven't been working out, whatever, and it, you know, look to put two plates on each side and start <laughs> bench pressing, right? Uh, but one of my mentors had five wealth principles, and I love to share these. This is an excellent start. Is if you write these five wealth Are principles, we recording down, this, bro? Because I need this for myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, consistency, persistency. Diligence, urgency, and excitement. excitement. You know, and you know the diligence it really can be discipline. You know yeah. that that really you could you can interchange that one out. But if you've got persistency, consistency, discipline, urgency, and excitement, those five, and you really just focus on those in your life and you apply them to any particular field. I don't care if it's business, it's entertainment, it's music. You know, it's your family life. You've got to have that in each one of those areas if you're going to be successful. Those five things really boil down. And you, if as an entrepreneur, you can't sacrifice the rest of your life in order to produce that vision. Because what will happen is you'll be lopsided. Like any wheel. If you look at any wheel and it has spokes in the middle of it, if any one of those spokes were shorter than the other spokes at all, you have a lumped wheel. And it will not run smooth. You need every single one of those spokes to be running at about the exact same length in order for it to run smooth. So just like the spokes in the wheel, you've got your family life, you've got your personal health that you've got to be concerned with, your relationships, your finances, your business, your personal growth, your spiritual life. All of those things have to be in accord in order for you to be successful in any one of those things. Because let's say you're great in business or you've got a great idea, but your family life is weak. Your finances is off personally. Something is going to cause you to fail. So as a new entrepreneur, I would tell them, be focused on balance, right? Whenever you get into something new, people tend to get so engrossed in it that everything else falls by the wayside. And every time that I've done that, I've ended up losing more than I have. You know, I almost lost my relationship with my wife when I was building this enormous business. But the world ends up scaling it back if you're not balanced enough. So how much support should you look for, for from your companion? And I'm not saying whether it's a male or female, but you have a vision and you have a dream. And if your, your companion doesn't share that dream with you or is negative about your dream because they want some instantaneous gratification, I want to get this whatever, I want to get a new car, I, I like them shoes they got. How do you how do you address that? That's that's and that's a big one, man. I, I mean, I've been married twelve years, and me and my wife. Um, I love my wife. I know she's listening right now. I don't know what's you know <laughs> she get at least <laughs> right? he loves but you. I love, I love my wife, right? But we have different uh, we have different goals. We're different types of people, um, and she comes from the tra- very traditional uh, way of thinking of you know you work to earn and then you've got your days off like that's it. Whereas I'm like, work, work, work till it's done. And that's my train of thought. But what happens is in a relationship, you've got to have buy-in. And you have to have the buy-in from your spouse or it's not going to work. You've, you've got to have that. But in order to get it so that you can do the things you do, you create boundaries and balance. And that's what we had to do. And that's what I have. Um, you know, right now I'm on tour. I've been gone from home for the last week. You know, I've been in West Virginia for the last week. Um, But I know before I came, I spent a considerable amount of time with my family. I know when I get back, I have some time that I'm going to dedicate to them. As long as you send a check back. 
Oh, girl. Oh, oh she. Oh, her. She knows. It. Like as long as her credit card bill that, is paid. Yep. You know, it once yep. once she starts See, getting close to that limit, it. that's a problem. You know. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Um. I experienced something similar. I don't want to get into it on this show though. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's not at my current wife. It's not with my current wife. It's with somebody else. And um, you, you, we have to understand that sometimes that person's with you may be th- with you because they want to see you down. And sometimes you have to reckon with that. That everybody is, n- everybody who's with you don't have your best interest at heart. Yeah, or if you think about it like a caterpillar, right? The person gets with the caterpillar, they're not thinking about flying. You know, like they could be afraid of heights. Like, you know, like the thought of leaving the ground and just soaring in the air is like, yo. And then you go into this uh, metamorphosis where now you can fly and it's like. Where's my caterpillar? (laughs) Right. You you know. Right. Like, look, you were fluffy. You know, <laughs> cutting the cute. Yeah, you, you couldn't do around. nothing. Like, oh. And I could control you. Right. right. Like, yo. Now, now I can't control you. Right, what right. what are we going to do? Right. Now you like really high off the ground. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's it. You, you know? And, and, and I'm going to tell you, it, that's a perfect analogy for people. Mm-hmm. Uh, caterpillars and butterflies eat two totally different things. They do different things. But they were, once were the same creatures. That's right. But they got to go through a change. Metamorphosis. If once, if two caterpillars are, you know, climbing a tree and one decides to, you know, to go through that process and then the other one, for Keep whatever going. reason, doesn't go, they'll never be together again. They'll right. never be together again. The problem with us as people is we tend to bind ourselves to people. And even though we go through a mental change in our mind where we've now grown and we see something else or something bigger, but we tied to you know this is my boys from the hood this is the guy i grew up with or these are the girls that i like to hang out with we don't want to let those ties go but we end up stifling and dying our growth because of that yeah and and you have to understand your friends ain't gonna want to see you get ahead either i'm just being real I, i i've got a frat brother i had to i had to make myself understand that i gotta leave this brother alone because you know he didn't have my best interests at heart. He, he was always there, but he was always there with his hand out. Yeah. And see, that's the thing about hitting competition. Like, competition is good amongst friends when everyone knows that, look, this is, like, we're competing. Like, it's competition. Like, I remember, you know, back in the day, it's like, look, you know, I wanted to be the best street fighter player. I wanted to be the best rapper. I wanted to, you know, and, and we all knew that. Like, look, you know, when... When we get into the cipher, we start spitting. It's like, look, man, I'm trying to be better than all of you. So it, it helped us maintain and keep that friendship and keep the bond because we were honest. We were 100% with what we our interests were. It was like, look, you know, now Bo, look, man, he trying to be the best, you know? So, so I got to step mine up. <laughs> right. So, so, I, so I need to step mine up because I want to be the best. But, but you have to understand, when we can look at the drug dealer in a microcosm, okay, I got this corner right here. I'm slinging. Okay? Man ain't been stepped on but once. He has been stepped on twice. He finds out man's cost the same as his, and I'm drawing all the people. He going to do something about that. <laughs> right, but see, that's where I go for the hit in competition because, like, instances like that, because I, I know, like, a lot of my friends were in competition with me on things that I was not in competition with them in you didn't realize right i didn't it was hidden it was like far as education uh life you know so they'd be like look man i you know i got better i get better grades than him you know or like you know my mom drives and his mom doesn't you know i mean like those type of competitions i was not even aware of i'm thinking like look we're all friends they're like nah you know look at his shoes you know me like yo both (laughs) shoes is busted the only problem i have with that right and it's true i think that you you lay you make a good point (laughs) Um, you know, if you if you draw it out and you've looked at it, all the relationships that we've had coming up, especially, you know, if you come from um, from the urban hood like, you know, I have, I've seen that, you know, a lot. Um, you know, when you don't have much, people start scrounging for things and they're really protective over a little bit. So you get that crab in a barrel mentality starts to happen. But what I found, especially in 
you know, my growth as an entrepreneur, it's not something I think about at all anymore. I don't even entertain it in a conversation. Um, there was a race car driver, a very famous race car driver, and one of my mentors uh, was interviewing him, and he said, how do you maintain the speeds of 200 and something miles an hour consistently for hundreds of lap like that? Like, if you had to give a new race car driver uh, one tip, and he said, very simply, don't look at the wall. And it was like, you know, like, is that it? Like, you get, you know, of all your years and you won all these races, you, that's the biggest tip. And it ended up being something really huge. And it has so much to do with this conversation is the fact that whatever, and like see Anthony talked about, whatever you look at, whatever you think about, you are going to be drawn to. Okay. You draw yourself to whatever you look at. Um, you know, you, you, even if you just look at it for a split second, you will be surprised how your body, your mind, your shift psychologically, you're just drawn into that thing. So you don't want to spend any time at all looking at the wall, looking at the thing that you don't want to come in contact with look forward. at all. Yeah. Looking forward, only looking forward. I train uh, speakers and I talk to speakers and I tell them that only speak positive. You only speak about what it is you want, only speak about what you want to sell, only speak about those things. Do not spend any time talking about what you don't want, what you don't like. We know that those things exist, but to an entrepreneur, that is like death. It is death. It's like doubt. Death is found in doubt and skepticism for an entrepreneur. Okay. Speak, brother, speak. Yes. We're in it. church. Entrepreneurial church. <laughs> well, let them, let them speak. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and and what you find, like, with, uh, like, musicians, and it's, you know, it is it is what it is. But, but, but go ahead. Let me just, I'm going to let you finish your story. But we had to bring that out to get that from you. Yeah, absolutely. Because if we God. hadn't had this conversation about the negativity of it, you wouldn't have brought that out. Praise God. That's why these forums are awesome. Yeah. That's why these yeah. this podcast yeah. is priceless. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a this is going to be priceless. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I can feel it, man. Like, and uh, what I, my point with musicians and just that hitting competition is if you have a friend, and and this is what I find personally that. Like, if your friend, let's say he has a Grammy. Like, you know, like I know a couple guys who wrote hit songs. And we have a a unspoken competition. You know what I mean? So so any moves that I make would be seen as cutthroat. It's like, yo, like, you backstabbing. You know what I mean? But as long as our relationship is in the open where it's like, you know, uh, I think an open relationship for us would be if I had a hit, then it's like we on even par. Right, we're on even par and look, whoever I can get a hit with, I'm gonna get it. Like, yo, whoever gonna buy this track is gonna buy this track. But when it's when it's dis- disproportionate, it's like if I go s- to a certain place, you know, it's like, look, man, why I mean, like, yo, you know, like yo, that's that's shisty. <laughs> you know, uh, and it and it's only because we have a unspoken competition because they got to know, like, yo, I want to hit. Like, look, man, like my, my family wants to eat too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, man, I want them eighty thousand dollar checks. I want those uh, hundred thousand dollar checks too. You know, like, look, it's it's whatever. Like, you know, and and if I dwell on it, like I said, any move, like if I go to a different camp, if I, you know, do anything. It's like, oh, that's perceived as backstabbing. That's perceived as wrong. And then, it's called actually, it's called clicking, right? And if I even go and be like, yo, he not even hot no more. You feel me? When was his last hit? That's wrong. Now, see, see, see. So now I can be seen in a negative light, into where it's like, look, man, he trying to pull me down. Now it's like I'm a crab. But it's only because you we've never established loyal. Right. I'm disloyal. It's like, yo, I'm not. Like I'm loyal to my family. <laughs> you know? It, Dude. Uh, you know, I wanna You, you wouldn't even be here for what for me. <laughs> How you gonna do me like that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You know, but that's what it seems like. You know, because yeah. we're not up front with our competitive nature, you know. So and, and, and I, I found this out too, um, not to cut you off at all. No, no, you but I found this about entrepreneurs, and I was sharing this uh, on a video the other day, is that people who are ultimate 
you know, not I say ultimate, but I'll be those of us who climb to the ultimate peaks of success. I have found a few character traits, and one of them is being really short, curt, right to the point, asking exactly what they want, saying exactly what they don't want. And sometimes it comes off brash. Sometimes it comes off a little curt, like a little rough. But they tend to not waste time, and they're really clear about what they want and what they expect from people. Mm -hmm. And they're not thin-skinned at all because they know everybody's got to have something. They'll ask for what they want. A favorite quote of mine with Oprah is, you get out of life what you're bold enough to ask for, right? And you've you got, got a spare change, man? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got some change in the car, right? You know, right? But it's true. It's like you got to ask for it. Like don't be afraid to take the no. Don't be afraid to step away from your friends, you know, and don't be afraid to step on people's toes. You've got to be able to – you know, ask well, for what you want, and you're not and necessarily step stepping on somebody's toes. If you're both compete, it's like a race, a track race. Both, all five people on that line want to get to that finish line first. Uh, am I stepping on your toes because I get there first, or because my drive is harder than yours? Unless, unless I use you to get right off your back to get to where I want to go, that's stepping on your toes, or that's using you. But if we equally working towards it, I don't owe you that to back up and let you go forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think sometimes, like, we come from, some of us come from cultures where we think that if someone is going to be offended by us doing that, we now shrink ourselves to kind of fit that status. We <clears throat> don't want to offend someone so badly that we rather to shrink ourselves and not express ourselves. I find it a lot in conversation, especially when I'm, um, you know, I've done really well for myself, I, and I don't, I don't hide it at That's all. That's what I said. You got any spare change? I, I told you. I told you I had <laughs> some in the car. I had some in the car. Be honest. Yeah, yeah. but. It, it shows in the type of car that I drive and the clothes that we wear, you know, stuff that my kids do. So what people will see me, they'll say something like, man, I wish I had your hand, you know, you know, if I was doing as good as you. And they say it in a way almost in condescending, like to make me shrink, you know. And I've seen other people that I know that are, you know, that do quite well for themselves. They'll draw back in those conversations and say, oh, no, not me, man. You know, no, you know, I'm doing just as good as you or whatever that situation is. But they'll shrink themselves as opposed to saying, hey, well received. Thanks for that word. You know, yeah. I appreciate the good word or whatever it is. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. We got to be strong enough to receive it mm -hmm. and not worrying about what other people uh, feel. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that that speaks a lot to I want to say, like, just black culture. Because I feel like we have a tendency to always work, like perception. It's like there is a saying that perception is king, and we we live by it. We don't use it in our culture, but like perception is king, you know. And like even if it's no matter what position you want to be, if you want to be like once you're the top dog, to maintain that perception, you know. Dress, uh, is dress for like, success. Right. Like, that's important. You know, and, like, I remember if if somebody thought you was a chump, like, that was, like, that that was no. You know, like, don't even think I'm a chump. Like, even if I go into a new neighborhood, like, you don't for that? one second think that, like, I'm soft. You know, like, like you, you don't even know me, but don't even think for one second, like, y'all just going to just come jump on me and just, like, have a good day. Like, nah, nah it's not that party. Have a bad day. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, like, like, like that's the type of stuff, you know, that, that we have in our culture. And I think that plays a part to a lot of what you were saying, where it's like, OK, do I need to shrink myself? You know, or do I need to you know, do I need to rise to the occasion? But I don't want to rise too high. You know, I don't want them to, you know, la, la, la. And you come up with all of these things. And, and I think that, you know, what you're saying and what you're telling us is like, look, man, don't be afraid. To be you, you know, like, look, whatever success that you have or your dream, it's not even, it hasn't even come to fruition yet, but believe in it and, and carry it with you. That, that brings me to, to the point that I want to make with that is really being comfortable within your own skin. Because once you become comfortable in your own skin, then you're not in competition. Mm -mm. You're in your own lane. That's right. 
you know, Stay and as you're in your own lane. And pump your brakes when you need to. Absolutely. <laughs> you can give the gas or pump the right. brakes, but long as you're looking forward, that's what counts. You're in your lane. Absolutely. Here's an example. <clears throat> when President Obama was running for the presidency, Jesse Jackson said, you can't do this. You ain't, you ain't come past me. You need to come through me to become the president. Obama looked at him like, yeah, right, okay. Watch my smoke and see where my train go. <laughs> wow, wow. That's something I didn't even know. Wow. Oh, yeah, man. There's so many different um, there's so many different views of other people, uh, I mean, of yourself by other people. And I saw a quote the other day. I posted it on Facebook. What you think of me is none of my business. Hmm. I like you know, that. That's so real. Like, what you think about me is none of my business. I can't concern myself with what you think about me. And if I do, if I spend any time trying to fit into your mold, it's like taking or a satisfy a peg you. and putting I'll it in your square. I'll never get it done. Yeah, it, it, you can't. It's a sure way to fail is trying to satisfy everybody. I, I, when, when I was in college, I used to teach, and I said teach, not tutor, teach linear algebra, differential equations, and calculus. And one of the few blacks who could do that. And somebody would need some help. I said, oh, oh, that's a such and such. Can I help you? You know calculus? You? Yeah. Why not me? And it, and it took me, I had to, sh- I shrank from that, just like you said. I was so busy trying to prove to people that I can do it. And as I developed as a man, I, okay, I have the knowledge if you want that knowledge, I'll give it to you. But not because you think I don't know it, but if you want it, come to me. Right. Not you nothing more that you have to prove anymore. Right. I don't have to prove it because I've been I've been a practicing engineer for thirty six years. <laughs> so Right. So that's powerful. That's super that's super powerful. Man, I wanted to uh kind of talk about before I, I well, what are you guys looking like with time because all right, okay. So um, do you want to talk about any ventures that you guys have, like, right now before you go? Kinda, Y'all got anything you know. we can invest in, me and him can invest <laughs> yeah. in? Uh, how, absolutely. How, how much you need, bro? How much, how, how, how much you need, bro? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the podcast I, is treating him real nice. Yeah, you right, know? yeah, the like, podcast yeah. is real good Y'all want to invest in our, our yeah, thing, yeah, man? Yeah, I, see, we got right. a little thing we got planned for podcasts. And see, podcasting is the next future, just like Streaming is the future. If you watch, like, HBO, you can stream HBO now. They're going to get away from the cable. Eventually, you're going to get to the point to where you can, you can cherry pick what, what you want to see. You can get one from Showtime, HBO Now. I'll let them go in and kick their thing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That, that's, that, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, technology is just, is just moving forward at such a rate. And now we have the capacity. Now the physical world of uh, the Internet has caught up with the capacity of technology. So now we're going to be able to deliver it to the ordinary people. So I you know, to, to agree with you on that one. Um, in regards to something that we can offer to ordinary people who may have not uh, been through school of entrepreneurship or don't have a lot of money to invest in starting their own business, or maybe just don't have any even idea of how to run a big business, I always share with people the idea of franchising. Franchising is an amazing way to start in business because somebody else comes with, up with the concept. They, they've they got a business model. It works already. There's a home base or a home company that handles all of the marketing and that type of stuff. So you really get a way to start off early, um, I mean, to start in business and get a jump, a jump ahead. Now, us, uh, me and uh, C. Anthony here, we're in the, the, I guess, franchising market of network marketing, right? That industry, it's $182 billion uh, of ordinary people who have just banded together with a company and used their talents and their skills. It's truly a profession that anybody can participate in, and it is making more millionaires than any other industry in the world. You don't need any education. It's based on the future. And I truly think that when people get the concept that network marketing is just a better way and they grab hold of it, it's going to reshape the world. I like network marketing because 
it doesn't have any bounds of the traditional business. You don't have to worry about the, the taxes. You don't have to worry about the product. You don't have to worry about shipping the product. The company handles everything. All you have to do is get really good at a skill of developing a relationship, networks, turning contacts into contracts, simple process of developing relationships, fostering them, and then turning that into a sale. Sounds like a winner. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have this vehicle right here where we can hit the whole world, mm-hmm. talk yeah. about different products. And, and no matter where you are, as far as education, uh, as far as where you are in the world, it doesn't matter. Um, right. You know, from a f- uh, physical standpoint, location standpoint. But this is what I want to say, you know, just like myself, you know, fail first grade, consider mis- mentally educated challenge. Didn't graduate, didn't go to college. So statistically, I shouldn't have been successful. Well, no, statistically, you should have been in prison. Absolutely. Or dead. Yeah, or dead. <laughs> or yeah. dead or any, you know, anything. Or but, wearing a dress. But what I like about this is a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair playing ground for anyone to be successful through self-development. Right. Self-development and getting around people who are successful and want to help you to become successful. That's the thing. Sometimes we don't have the right cheerleaders in our camp. Sometimes we have people that are that are waiting for our praying for our downfall instead of cheerleading us on. I call them dream stealers. <laughs> you know, they like to steal your dreams, and uh, so we just got to surround so ourselves around they would some good people. Spoil a wet dream, then. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell them. Don't tell them what the dream is. They coming. Hey, wake up, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> what you smiling for? Wake up. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so so it's just it's just a matter of being able to plant yourself into an environment to grow. Because I'm I'm here to share with you this, as I as I conclude, um, you know, just just take a mango seed for instance, or an apple tree seed, right? right? And we're sitting in this room right now. If I were to put that mango seed or that apple seed right here in the floor, in 50 years, would it grow? No. Bobby, would it grow? Yeah, we got. If we get a no, and we gotta have a yeah. yeah okay, I so we all I always get mixed feelings when I or mixed answers when I when I ask that question. Got to but I'm here to share with you. In the next fifty years, it will not grow. Why? Because it's not in the right soil. It's not in fertile soil. <laughs> it's just right? on the ground. And 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 it's not getting nourished. It's not getting its right nourishment to be able to grow. So the yeah. same thing for us, right. we have to be in an environment to where we can grow. If we're staying in the same place where we've been all this time and we're not seeing any results, now it's time to change our environment that is and get around the right insanity, people. insanity, doing the same thing and expecting different results. Absolutely. So you have to have what's called a paradigm shift. I'm not talking about two doms, but I'm saying a <laughs> paradigm. You have to have a paradigm shift in life. Yeah. So. And that's why I'm so grateful to Larod Smalls. He's actually here in West Virginia. He flew all the way down, left his family, has three wonderful children and a wife, left his family to come here to support our market here in West Virginia with this awesome opportunity that we have in place. And I'm so grateful to him for that. And uh, he actually took me under his wing because sometimes we need that mentorship. Right. You know, we can, we can only do what we can do. But once we get that right mentor, it brings new ideas. It brings new philosophies. Right. And now we can take those new ideas and those new philosophies and we can apply them to our lives. And then we can build upon that and we can grow. Right. And right. that's where I'm talking about fertilization. He's my fertilization. Yeah, man. Yes. Wow, that's, that's, that was, that's a good point, man. I, I well receive it. Uh, if anybody wants to do some commerce with us, um, definitely we're, we receive it. We're excited. How can, we, <laughs> how can they reach you? Great, great. They can... Uh, everybody can chime in um, to the conversation. DreamAgainUSA.com. Just like that. DreamAgainUSA.com. And anybody that wants to find out more information, plug it in. Go to DreamAgainUSA.com. My name is Larod Smalls. You can look me up on social media. Facebook.com slash Larod Smalls. L-E-R-R-O-D-S-M-A-L-L-S. And LarodSmalls.com. And I love to connect with you and support you any way that I can share any ideas. All right. And uh, if you want to get a hold of C. Anthony Parker, I, 
I say my name is C. Anthony Parker because that's my millionaire mindset name, but my real name is Charles Anthony Parker. So you can go to Charles A. Parker on Facebook, inbox me, check me out, see what I'm doing on a daily basis because I do post every day. And then also you can email me at C. Anthony Parker. That's C is in Charles, C. Anthony Parker at gmail.com. And I uh, definitely would love to work with you and put you in that fertile soil. And, man, what we will do, um, I will connect with you guys through my Bo Miles page. And then I will shoot out all of this, like, you know, because leading up to when it posts, I'll hit, like, shoot your um, pictures and things like that, kind of getting people ready, like, all right, it's coming. So, you know, and I'll get you guys the links to this um, interview so that you can use it however you want to. You guys can have it like, okay, this is how I'm going to use it or whatever. You know, you I don't even know. Like, just, you just, I'll get you guys the links. Um, but, yes, I will connect with you both on uh, Facebook through my Bo Miles. I'll add you so that way I can uh, just blast because I'll be blasting you guys on Twitter, Facebook, just all the different spaces. You uh, you know how we do, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my ex, she, she, she woke me up a couple times. Wake up. Why are you smiling? You cheating on me? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't supposed to be happy in that dream. <laughs> happy? <laughs> yeah, man. So, man, it's been a pleasure to have you. Here we got C.A. Parker. We got LaRod Smalls. Man, it's been an honor to have you guys on the show. Uh, we're going to pause it. Don't worry. We got, we got that uh, Game of Thrones uh, to, talk to talk about. So, it's still more to the cast, but the, the brothers are leaving. Bef- uh, any before, last things? Before we end... You know, I want to give it back to you guys for even inviting us on yeah, again. Yeah, man, we're super grateful. We and one thing that. I will say is this. In order to be great, you have to become grateful first, and we're grateful to be here. We're grateful you to all. have you here. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're, ple- you we're pleased to have a quality of of guest on our show. Right. Yeah, man. Okay. Awesome. And and just to clear things up, that was a Kansas City roll. You know what a Kansas City roll is, don't you? The, the 100 on top and then number ones in between. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't hear it. I never heard of that. You say you're going to learn something, man. Yeah, you, got, you got to listen to our show. Man, I learned from the old, <laughs> the old G's in my neighborhood. Yeah. We do it the other way around. <laughs> you put all the ones on the top, they keep your good ones on the inside. You don't want nobody to see those. Yeah, yeah you're right <laughs> you know, about that. I, huh? So, yeah, the old G's in my neighborhood. Can, can, we, can we expect that you guys will come back for us? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. Look okay. forward to it. Because, I mean, you can use this as a forum to reach other entrepreneurs. Right. Well, we don't have to put all this on the air. We'll just, just well, pause well, Yes, we can. Yes, we can. It's okay, brother. Just They got to go. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> we appreciate it. All right. Are we on? Yes, sir. Uh, and their mics are off? Nope. Because I hear a... Yeah, I think I hear a... I can't lose them. I'm an echo or something. Yeah, just... There we go. What's up? What's up? <laughs> So we had some fun guys on here, right, man? Yeah, man, that was yo, that was uh, you know very informational and, and inspirational too, man. So I can't wait to listen to this. Don't look at the wall. <laughs> he said, "Don't look at the wall." You trying to do two hundred? Don't look at the wall, look baby. At the wall. We trying to do three hundred. So right. We, we got to look ahead of us. Right, man. Let's man. Let's get right into this Game of Thrones action because I know some people they were looking at the title, they were hoping to see. Um, what is it? Book Book of the Stranger, you know, but they saw some names and I know they were like, yo, man, I mean, are they going to talk about that game? With, are they going to recap and review the Game of Thrones? Man, so, they, yeah. they got me. So what, uh, what, 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 did, what did you think about that episode, man? It was a fill in. They, they came at us hard the first three episodes. They had to slow the roll down a little bit. Because nothing really significant happened. And they but gave the us a girl. chance to, at the end. Right. <laughs> she killed all them MFs. Right, man. Took them out. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, uh, at this, so the interview is over. So, if you guys, at this point now, we're just talking about Game of Thrones and, some, and, and any other thing mm-hmm. else, you know. Because I definitely wanted, uh, I know that we have been picking up. Um, fans who like to hear us talk about Game of Thrones. So, at this point, the interview with uh, Larod and C. A. Parker is now over. We are now officially 
Game of Thrones. Like you said, but man, I, I really like that episode. You know, um, my girl Osha, she died. You know, I didn't think she was going to die. But uh, once I once she was going for that knife, like I knew. Oh yeah, I like yo. Come on, you 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 too thirsty. Well, here's you the know? thing. You too thirsty right now. They want us to hate both so yeah. much till we yeah. want to see him die. Yeah, and he gonna die. They all gotta die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he lives long enough, he's still gonna die. Right. But he gonna die in this one. Yeah, this season, you think? Yeah. Because they're going to get their house back. All right, so you think this season he's going to die? If you don't get your house back, he, how he going to get how you gonna get your house back if he don't die? Well, they can defeat him, and then he run off, you know, back to his home. I just I just had a feeling, and it looks strange to me. We're going to find out that everybody's going to find out that um, John is not, what's it called, a half-brother. Oh, Stanza mm-hmm. and, the, and the rest of the Starks. And he's going to marry Stanza. Oh, are you think he's going to live and marry Stanza? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they weren't close. Mm-mm. She was, you know, a, a prick to him. Well, she's, so. she's, a, she's a lady now. She didn't have that thing stretched. She know what she want because she missed that itch from from Rich. What's that guy named? Uh, Ramsey. Oh, Ramsey, yeah. She missed that itch. <laughs> So yeah, but you know, I mean, remember a couple of episodes ago, everybody was saying she was getting raped, so she don't miss it, you know. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, man, that's definitely a possibility that she could, it, if they find out that hey, look, he's not your well, brother. See, outside the book now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is all uh, new stuff, and you know the books will be different. So you know they, he's going to approach that different. From how they're approaching in the, he might know. have to follow the storyline. Nah, nah, because they went off of they left his storyline, even with the stanza thing. Like in the books, stanza didn't marry um, Bolton and didn't get raped by Bolton or somebody else. So you know, so they're going down different paths. But I think they ultimately they're going to end and hit some key points mm-hmm. together. But how they get there will be a little different, you know, and, uh, yeah, man, that would be, that would be interesting. Like, I just, it's like now. When they was hugging, I just had that feeling like, it looked like they in love. Well, you figure they haven't seen each other and all that terrible stuff happened. You know, he's just happy to see his little sister. and She's happy to see, like, you know, this is her only brother, you know, that she knows until they reveal that, you know, they're not brothers and sisters, but. Because she's she dominating him. Because he didn't want to do nothing. He like, what are we going to do? Yeah, yeah. Death changed him. You know, softened him up. Oh, no, nah, man. He, uh, yeah, man, he's. He wasn't too soft. He, he hung them guys. Yeah, but he, that messed him up, man. That's why he quit. Like, that's why he quit the Night's Watch. He's like, look, man, I'd be I like, can't do it no more. Fear. You know? I've been there. I've seen it, done it. You know? I know what it's like. <laughs> I'm going to send you there. He don't want to fight, you know? He like, hey, man. He's he's definitely because remember before before the death he was like yo man we need to go up to uh, Craster's Keep and, and kill those mutineers like yo like he was ready look I'm going into the uh, into the Wildlings King like look he was about that life man he still I'm, is I'm going into their kingdom and I'm and look I'm gonna make it happen just me by myself like. Like Jon Snow was, he was about it, you know. He and he's he's changed, I, and I like the way that they changed him because we thought he was going to come back and be ruthless, but he it, it was the opposite. They punked him out. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, and what they're doing is they're showing that the women are evolving into the strong leaders. Right. Like, a, yeah, yep, definitely, man. And that it that's that's because like thing. they say with with um. What, what's, what's the girl named the Targaryen? Ta- 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 yeah, Danny. When she killed all them people, remember that thing is you keep what you kill. You right. k- you kill a king, you become the king. Right. So she, she killed, killed all, all, of, all of them. Right. And yeah, walked yeah, out there butt naked. <laughs> 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 yep. Had them biddies looking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, man. That was that was. I thought that was good. Man. I thought that episode was was good. Um, 
I was definitely like, yeah, man. Uh, your boy uh, Littlefinger, he came back into the mix, you know, with uh, with Aaron. And All them kids done grown up quick, can't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you figure, I mean, that was like, what, two years? The show been popping for like five. So that's like seven years, you know, seven year difference from the first to now. So, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, they definitely big. But little finger like that, I, that was good to see him back. And then I just like that part when uh, when that guy who was first, you know, because they were shooting the arrow together, and then he just, you know, he drops the arrow, he goes up, Uncle Peter. Because he, he wouldn't be his uncle. He would be his father. His right, father. yeah, yeah, because uh, he was beating that coochie up. Ugh. Killed Ugh. his mama. <laughs> he's going to find out. Nah. You don't think so? Nah, he's... He's, he's going to find out because his cousin is going to tell him. Who, um, Stanza? Yeah. Nah, because he's a prick. He's like a little Ramsey Bolton in training. So, you know, he'll probably die, and they'll be like, you know... He thought he was a Robin. <laughs> and he was so obsessed with the moon door. He uh, Make him fly. Make him fly. Right. He make him fly, jumped. mommy. Make him fly. But that's the thing, man, like how that guy was like, you know, uh, no, nah, I'm good, but thanks. He was like, like, yo, man, how did you, you left with Stanza and you come back and I hear that she's married off. Like, yo, you did it. And then he flipped it like, yo, the only person I told was you. And uh, that guy, that Lord, he thought that, you know, that he, he had some real power. And uh, Littlefinger flipped it on him. And the, the little Lord of the Veil was like, yo, I mean, do we need to make him fly out the moon <laughs> door or what? Like, make him fly. Right. Real quick. Like, yo, man, I don't care how long. Like, because you figure he's been with him the whole time. Mm-hmm. You know, that whole time that that little finger was gone he was with big boy and so big, big boy thought he you know big boy thought like yo man we getting close you know we tight <laughs> no that's my uncle man what right. are you talking about that's family right right man like yo man do we need to make him fly or what he was like oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> yeah yeah like yo man you need to you need to know where you are you know me <laughs> no, learn your place right right <laughs> <laughs> You know, I love the bill. Like, yeah, man. You better learn your place because the boy, the guard stepped up. Right, stepped, did they? they did they? Forward. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, we we'll, don't we'll care how long you been here, man. Like, yo. I don't like you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you kind of seem like you're a little bit uppity. You feel me? So, look, man. Yeah, they, they did step up on him. He was like, he was shocked. Oh, man, I guess I'm not I've been same. loyal to the van for <laughs> 40 years, and all it takes is this little... <laughs> Yeah, like, man, that's all it takes. Like, that's it. Like, that's all. That's it. Right. Don't take a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, you try to live or you try to die. That's all we do. Look, what you trying to do, Biggie? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, this, I thought, man, when Tommen went to and got pimped out by the uh, High Sparrow, I thought King Tommen down on King's Landing. Yeah. I thought that Cersei put him up to it, and they was running game. You feel me? So he was supposed to go there and, you know, cuddle up to him, and then so he can get close so that they can be ready to kill him. But uh, this episode confirmed that, nah, nah, he's just he's just a sucker. You feel me? Well, like, King? Yeah, yeah, man. He's a little punk. Yeah, yeah, like he's a super punk. Like, And I was, I thought that, you know, all right, you know, they're going to, they really trying to run game on them. But First nah. thing I would say is, I gave you that authority. I can take that authority back. That's all he has to say. I can take that authority back. That which I give, I can take away. Right. Right, man. And that's the thing, like... He he's just he's just soft. He he doesn't even. He's not well, gonna make it. I mean, yeah, he's, he's not, not gonna, gonna make it. it but he, he, I guess, because they got his wife. You feel me? So he's like, look, I can't pop off. Well, because they're gonna. The Todd get she's getting ready to open up a can of whoop ass on everybody. She gonna she gonna get her dragon. She going back to where she came flew from. She gonna wipe out all the other people. You know, because she over on that side. Right. 
She's going she to take her people. She, cause she, she's now the ultimate king, queen, whatever you want to call her. She's Pharaoh. She's the, the yin and yang. She's the alpha omega. She is it. And everybody has paid homage to her. Did you see that, man? Yeah, yeah. All the uh, Darth Raki, yeah, they dropped down. They dropped down. Yeah, yeah. They were definitely like, yo, all right. You know, she's a mystical little bitty. I, yeah, well. Burned everybody up. She walk out there, just only her clothes are burnt. Because the dude talking about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get you. Oh, yeah. And when I get <laughs> done with you, I'm going to let all these guys get you. Then I'm going to let all my troops get you. Right. And if you're still intact, I'm going to let the horses get you. Right. Oh, no. She like, <laughs> just set them up. Yeah. Set them on fire. And they run like little bitches. <gasps> <laughs> I'd have been punching through the wall, man. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, because they didn't have that weapons. So, oh well. Yeah, I guess if they could do that again, they bring them weapons up in there. Well, it's a little, <laughs> little too late now. Cause, yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, man, that was that was crazy. She was like, "Nah, you know what? Y'all weak. Y'all little men, like." You got weak kung fu. <laughs> you know. You got weak kung fu. She's like, look, man, y'all in this wooden hut with all this fire. I guess you think uh, that I ain't resisting. You ain't hear how the dragons were born, huh? <laughs> She's like. You have no skills. Right. You have right. no concentration. <laughs> You've got weak kung fu. <laughs> Yeah, man, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was good, though. I mean, I really, I like that. It's like, all right, she, uh, you know, stepping up. She didn't, because we originally thought that, you know, the dragons were going to come in and play a part in how she and was rescue gonna, her. But right, shit, they bet them dragons better be scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna burn her clothes off, but right, she ain't got to run from them. Right, but see, man, just her. I think she's gonna end up being a bad guy. Um, when you know, like at the end, I think that they're gonna have to band together to uh, to beat to, to defeat her to defeat her because you can't defeat them dragons, man. Right, but see, that's that's the whole thing, man. Because remember, you have the Ice King who's coming, and some people think that either the reason why they were that they woke up was because of the dragons, like because in season one, you know, like when they first start coming. You know, that's when that red comet comes across, and that's when you have the dragon, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, I got to look at that so, because they said every thousand years or so, they they even predicted prior to the concept of the dragon that winter's coming, right. the long winter's coming. Yeah, so they knew that, that you know, winter is coming in the long winter. And, uh, you know, so especially the north knows about it. And I think that um, I think that it's going to take the maybe the Ice King, Jon Snow, and the boys like they're going to have to just go after uh, Danny and 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 the gang. Cause mm, I don't think they're going to them, them, them is dead people. Right? They have no loyalties to. to they have it to the to the Ice King. Cause you, the Ice King controls them. But you can't. The Ice King can be killed. He will shatter if they hit him with, with that steel. Right, but he he has the whole dead, and, and <clears throat> he res and he can resurrect him as he. But at, if he's no longer, land. but if he no longer exists, that's they a, don't that, exist. That, yeah, yeah, they can't they can't go on without him and his magic. And and, and I don't know Especially. if you saw, saw the previews, but the the boy who who has the visions, he's standing up there looking at them. And he's supposed to be invisible, right? And they fucking looking at him like, yeah. "Yo, what? what, what, what you <laughs> <laughs> Freaky dinky, man! Right, right. Yo, like, what, yo what, what set you from, man? Yo, you got some big balls to be up here, up by in here? yourself. Yeah, where you come from? <laughs> and then the Knights King is looking like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I can't wait for that episode. Like, that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, man, you it's know. going bad too quick, though, man. We, this is going to be see episode five. We only right. got five more to go. This year. Yeah, five more weeks We waited a whole year. Two. Two years. We waited two years? Right. From uh, from the season, yeah, from like season five to now, it's been like two years, man. 
Well, they supposed to start up when they were supposed to start up in October. They were supposed to start up with the Walking Dead, you know. Yeah, they figured we we, just, we yeah pushing it, kept pushing it. Well, they they, they did it strategically not to compete. Now, there was some show that came on supposed to come on tonight at nine o'clock. Oh, well, Sunday at nine o'clock, directly opposite them, which is Fear the Walking Dead. So, can you choose wisely? What you gonna choose? Fear the Walking Dead, Game of Thrones. I'm not too fond of Fear the Walking Dead because I don't like the cast on there. I don't think it's going to last like The Walking Dead. So we'll see. But um, I, I thought it was pretty good, like, starting. I think it it fell apart just with those, um, with the people episodes. Like, that's when it got whack. You know what I mean? What, Fear the Walking Dead? Yeah, yeah, like when they were in the camp. and That was like, okay. Well, see, that... You have to understand this is supposed to be a simultaneous situation as The Walking Dead. This just happened to be another group of people who, who is happening at the same time the guys in Atlanta are, but these guys are out in California. Right, right. So it's the same. It's that time when Rick was in the hospital. It's the same. It's during that time. Actually, Rick was in the hospital. They experienced it, the, the initial devastation, whereas Rick didn't. Experience it all. He didn't right. walk up into right. it. Right. Well, they lived it. Yeah, and that's what we're we're seeing that you know that yeah. breakdown of society yeah. and everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah, man. I thought you know I thought that those parts were like the whack parts. Yeah, um, just it was like uh and then you had the just that whole camp and with the military man, like that that was whack. You feel me? What ultimately is like yo, you know, big ups to Kirkman for even you know he's making money. Like, yo, he getting his ideas out there. I mean, you know, like, yo, there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, but yeah, man, back on that, that, that GOT, uh, it's like, yo, Night King. I think that, that either Jon Snow is going to be a, a villain or Danny is going to be a villain. Like, you can't have – because, you know, like you said last week, man, like, yo, this is Game of Thrones, like, this isn't The Simpsons. Like, this isn't uh, Friends where, you know, everybody that you want to live and have this happy ending, like, nah. Because they set you up. Like, season one sets you up for how the series is going to end. Well, they build up this character and you get your hopes up high and then, like, well, <laughs> off with his head. It, it, it established for me that the Lannisters – aren't as strong as they think they are. Their father's dead, so the power is gone. They may right. think they, that they have power, the two of them, but they're sh- you know, every time they go to the council, it's showing that you're being punked out by somebody right. who, has, who once feared you and who long, no, no longer has fear because your father's dead. Right. That was the power. And because of their ancestry, that weakened the, their moral fibers. You know, you gonna kill a you gonna kill a little boy, and that's what his intent was to kill that little boy, because he saw you bopping your sister. You couldn't wait until you was in a private setting to do that. You so, I mean, the, the, that's what destroyed Rome, the debauchery. God, if there's three, will you let them live? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, so I I don't think the Lannisters are gonna survive. I think their their family's gonna be wiped out basically because the Targaryen's coming back and taking hers. Nah, she's like, yeah, I guess she could come back, but she's gonna die. Like, you know, it ain't I mean, gonna be by fire. Oh no, nah, no, nah, it's gonna be just a blade to the to the heart. A lot of people think that Dario is you know the sons of the harpy, but just looking at Miss Andy and, and Grey Worm, like I feel like you're right, I man. I feel I still feel like they are the sons of the harpy, man. Mm-hmm. I really do. Like, just because when you when you look at their face and, you know, like, they get to watch these guys try to figure out, okay, who, who are the sons of the harpy? And you look at them, like, they look like they don't want them to find out. Right. And then, and the whole idea is that they want Danny to kill all the masters, you know? And looking at the... Um, looking just at how Tyrion and, and Varys is trying to, un, you know, find out who's a part of this, 
you know, I, and just looking at their faces, man, I feel like they're guilty. You know, people oh, yeah. think it's Dario, but I think he got a thing too. Oh, all right. His pedestal and his balls and his nah, stones. Because old girl wouldn't be interested in him for no other reason. He ain't no women. So he must got a powerful tongue, man. Right, but it's not even about sex, you know? For her it is. Nah, nah, man. You know, women, they can they can put that to aside. Just, you know, get some, get some, get the milkman. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah man. Milkman come and beat that up, you feel me? And go on about his business. And, and she'll she, she still love that man she yep, with. Yep, oh. She's still with Grey Worm, you know. Oh, no. Couldn't couldn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, as you know, like look, just like Danny, like how that dude was beating it up. She like, all right, you know, I need, you know, need a cock, but it is what it is. Like, look, man. You know? Yeah, bro. I picked that up Saturday. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah. He said, yeah. It's called an epiphany. Oh, all right. Oh, man. And another thing from that, from the Danny and Tyrion thing, what do you think about the terms that they came to? How do you feel about that? That's that's me personally? Yeah. It's my life. How are you going to give away seven years of my life? You know, either you're going to do it or you ain't. And if they don't want to roll with it. And I think he, he gave them the option. I think they're going to still continue to go against the, the grain. And they're just going to have to go, well, fuck y'all. We gave you a chance. We're going to kill you now. Right. Now, see, by them saying, like, we're not backing the Sons of the Harpy, like, but they yeah. might have some truth to it to where they're not. Like, if it's Missandei and Grey Worm, you know, that's pulling the strings for this thing. Mm-hmm. So... Their idea is like to, because they thought that, okay, we say that, then we just send the army to go kill the masters over in this town, mm-hmm. in those, you know, three cities, you know, and then Tyrion like, yo, but then you got the Sons of the Harpy going to, you know, try to overthrow Marine, where we at? Yeah. You know, which they're not because Miss Andy and Grey Worm, you know, is, is them. Right, is them. So they like, yo, they're not going to strike because, you know, we got it. But he doesn't know that, you know. So he's just like, yo, you know, we need to weed them out. They just trying to send them out here. And he thought they were just going to try to kill him. He's like, no, nah, we need to talk to him. So then that, you saw that just their face was like, oh, crap, man. You know, like, and... That's what you're going to get, man. Like, I really, I'm with you. Like, yo, I think you on this. You know, even if it turns out not to be, they were still, you know. They, 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 they're part and parcel to the print. There's something not wholesome. Right, with them. Yeah. yeah I feel it. How, how did they become so close? She is the queen's. Interpreter. Direct interpreter. And he's just a. He's the. A eunuch. The sergeant, you know, the leader of the mm-hmm. army. He's the, you know, head of the army. Something's going to happen. Like the guy who called the eunuch a eunuch, he got to die. Oh, all right. He going to die. Oh, that one of those yeah. masters? Yeah, because he's the one who brought the gold. And she said she said the, when they were little dragons, remember? When he gave her, we brought you gold so you can leave. Oh, back in what, season two? Some, yeah, like season two when, when she was first started conquering. The 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 master character who who brought the gold, and he said, "Get the gold, let's get out of here." And she said, "No, that's my gold. You gave that to me. Y- y'all can leave. You have to go back and watch." Oh, it, all right. Okay. Okay. You know what'd be nice thing to do if we could do that? Like all the tracks that that line up. You know, like they jump from one little story to another. Mm-hmm. We can take them and push them together. And then Where push each them. story, each individual's story just plays continuous. Right. Without jumping around. Right. So like Danny's story will play from beginning to end. Every clip that she ever had. Yeah. And each of their individual. Yep. Yeah. Now, it will probably be for, for the year. It'd probably be an hour because <laughs> they would give us like ten minutes each. Right, right, yeah, I know. So, like, yeah, like two two seasons is like for the whole five seasons would be an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, yeah, man. But on to the slavery terms, like I felt like, you know, how did you feel about that? Did you feel that that, that was fair? How how can you how can you barter my life away for seven years? Right now, and, I was you know what, what do I get in return to stay in bondage for seven years? Right, and that's the thing. If you got two things, you got slavery and you got this war. It's like, look, man, like we we can't be focusing on two things at the same time. We can only take down one at a time, you know, and he's trying to figure out who are the sons of Harpy, you know, so like. Just kill every motherfucking body and you'll figure it out. You know, so, man, it's like, yeah, I, I definitely was at a standstill, like, because, you know, man, those seven years are going to be brutal because that's the thing, like, you know, Lincoln, he tried to take a a long approach. Yeah, he did. He he. What he did was, what Lincoln did was, he said, we're going to leave slavery in the states that already exist, the slavery already exists, but we don't want, because eventually it will die off. It'll, it'll wither off the vine and drop off. But we don't want slavery in those new states that are coming in. Okay? Right. And you can't bother with, you know, it's like, and, and, and what the little dwarf said was, was ironic. He says, We've abolished slavery for a hundred years, and I'm richer than all y'all put together. Right. <laughs> so essentially, what he's saying is, we can come up with a system where we make everybody a slave, which we have now here in this, <laughs> in this right in this country, and it's called your credit score. You a slave to your credit score. Right. You a slave to work. You know, government gonna get theirs. Right. And and the business people, they're going to pay you, and then you got to pay Uncle Sam. Right, but you are, you are generating millions and millions of dollars, but okay. you're only getting 20000 Like, look at McDonald's, mm-hmm. right? McDonald's generates, like, especially those big stores, mm-hmm. like McDonald's generate a million dollars a day. Like, there were some stores back home in Baltimore that we – that. They were legendary, you know, million-dollar stores, man. They made a million dollars in one day. Like, that store every day made a million dollars. That's That was the business. So just think about it. If, if it makes a million dollars a day, but they're paying their people, they're paying their workers $6,000 a year, $8,000 a year, $9,000 a year, $10,000 a year, a year, but you're making a million dollars a day. And that's how that's – how modern day slavery is yeah that's modern day slavery is to where you are generating millions of dollars but you are getting pennies yeah that's that's how they want to keep it right that's exactly how they want to you know keep it. they're like look man minimum wage you know if we rate if we raise the minimum wage then we got to raise the prices we gotta we gotta raise taxes we gotta raise everything and it's like why because they're like, look, man, because, you know, look, I still want to give him pennies. Like, look, man, this is a good system here. You know, we getting money hand over fist. You know, and that's the thing. That's That was the most important thing of that episode for me was them just talking and dealing with slavery because because that that system that he's talking about, like, look, man, you know, uh, we're we're super rich. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and, and, and But the thing he keeps saying is, that was his father's money. That wasn't his money. Right. Okay, that was his father's money. That was from his father's corruption. Right, his, that's just the family, you know, Lannisters, because all yeah. of the Lannisters, you know, like, yo. They broke now. We, we got that big boy cake. Well, they still, the Iron, the Iron Bank is still backing them. You know, the, the Great Bank is still backing King's Landing and the Crown. So they still got that money. Like, Lannisters well, is that's still. It, well, that's where well, that's where Arion is right now. In yeah, that, in yeah, that. yeah. So uh, she's there for a reason. Arya, Arya, she's there for a reason, and it's not just to learn a trade, to wait for people to die, It's to go out there and kill people. Right, right. But you did you see in that preview? They was like, you know, did you think that that only the only the bad people die? Like, you, you figure she's going to have to, like you were alluding to last time, she's going to get kicked out, you know, because 
they're probably going to give her a job where it's like a good person, just a nice. It's not somebody who you know. Mm-hmm. He he's been uh, cor- he's been charging more for the um, cockles or something. Mm-hmm. Cockles, right? Like, nah, it's just a regular nice person who's just working or a nice family guy, and she's going to be like, no, and uh, and it's like, nah, well, you got to go then. You can't be a faceless if you care about. You know, we just kill. We, we don't care who. We don't care who it is. You know, if it's time, if the right, if their the name come up. Say, <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's the thing, man. And I think, I think that you know, she's gonna get, uh, she's gonna be torn about that because it's like, okay, it's oh, it's always good when you have a reason to kill somebody. You know, like all right, this person, yeah, but was can, a child can you molester. kill somebody who who hasn't done anything? Right, right. Who's who who deserves to live? Who you know, he's just working. She's just working. Just and she's not sick. And that's what death does. It, it it shows no favoritism. Right. You got to kill everybody and let God sort them out. Right. And I think you know she's gonna hit uh she's gonna hit a wall when she comes to that to that choice. Well, she already decision. has when she didn't do that old man who kept calling her for 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 the sea oyster shells. Yeah, yeah, but he was you know. They said he deserved it. He he was a crook, you know. He wasn't as bad a crook as that one that was raping them kids and beating on her. Right, right. But what about when that is that person that's not a crook? Like, you know. Yeah, the everyday Joe. Right. Look, he just he's, he goes to work every day. But the numbers are high. Look, we got 40 million men, you know, that don't have any wives. Like, look, they ain't, they ain't beating up nothing. Look, I need you to kill some of them off. She like... Come out he's of China, good, bro. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a good guy though. Like he just he jerking off. He's all right. He masturbates know? too yeah. much. He's like, nah, nah, nah. It's time to get those numbers down. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see to see her deal with that. You know, she might lose her mind. You know, so uh, she might get kicked out. But yeah, man, just that whole slavery thing. You know, mm-hmm. look, okay. Give you seven years to to figure out what you guys are gonna do, but you figure, man, seven years. You know, is the, is that enough time? Because clearly, they don't know any other way other than slavery. Clearly, they don't. Because if they did have anything other than slavery and slave labor, you know what I'm saying? Like that's well, the only thing they know. It's a lifestyle. It's a mindset. You know, slaves produce slaves. Because the, the the parents perpetuate the slavery, the parents perpetuate the slavery. Because <coughs> they tell you if you don't do what Master says, he's gonna sell you down the river. Master, please don't sell me down the river. <laughs> okay, and they're trying to show us something, and it's it's almost offensive because. We were the slaves up in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our ancestors. I mean, not us. Well, see, they don't they don't <laughs> separate that difference. Though. Yeah, but we. I mean, but we and our life and our upbringing. We we were not, you know, slaves. You know, no. we can't speak. No, we can't speak of those experiences, but we can deal with or address what we feel is ill treatment. Right. And that's the thing, like, even in the show, like, that's what is to come. Even after they abolish slavery, you still have that second-class citizen looking down upon, frowning upon. And they can, he, he, he tells them, I can show you how to make money without slavery. But it takes somebody, it takes somebody giving up their money for me to have more than you. Right. So if if there's thirty dollars and we both give them fifteen dollars a piece, I take ten of your fifteen, you left with five. So that makes me richer than you. Right. And then you complain, then you send your boys out and they <laughs> <laughs> But see that's the thing though. It's like once they abolish slavery, then you're gonna have new 
startups. It's just like when the when the industry changes and the uh-huh. money shifts, but, then but you get new but you millionaires, to, but new billionaires. But you don't uh, they don't understand how to make that paradigm shift because for thousands of years, the guy said it's been for thousands of years. Slave trade has been for thousands of years. So how do they, how do they how do they make that shift from human bondage to entrepreneurship? Right. You know that's what we should have asked the guys. <laughs> they, asked probably, they, they probably never watched the Game of Thrones. <laughs> They're they too busy making money while we sitting back watching Game of Thrones and they right. they getting rich. What do you say, five thousand dollars a month? Yeah, that's not a lot of money because I make that. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I want to say that that was er- like early in their thing, oh. you know? Because uh, yeah, I mean, you know, when we're listening back, we can you know tell. But yeah, I don't think that's what he's saying. Now, like that's all he makes. I I, I hope they pay their taxes because sometimes Uncle Sam be monitoring this crap. Right, right, right. Especially certain people, you know. Yeah. Like they like, oh, oh yeah, we wanted to hear them anyway. Yeah, get your <laughs> books together. That's all I can tell y'all, bro. Get your books together. Say, look, because um, Sam is listening. Because Wesley Snipes, Red Fox, Isley Boy, boy was his name. All of them. Richard Can't Pryor, the other one. Joe Lewis, yeah, all of them. They just you you making money. They come after you, man. So, right, make sure you got your books right. in order. They got to figure out because you figure. I mean, especially if they're looking at you, like if you, you think about Capone, right? They're looking at him like a criminal, and they're like, "Look, which way can we get him?" It's like, all right, let's hit him with the taxes. So it's like when you're a star and you're a celebrity, but they look at you like you're a criminal, you know, like you're a second-class citizen. Mm-hmm. Like you don't even deserve. You don't deserve it. Look at those monkeys over there. Right, right. Look at those monkeys over there. They get all that money. I got a piano. I don't got a piano. Let's go take it from them. <laughs> right. They don't deserve it. <laughs> right. Right. They don't deserve and it. They probably encourage that attitude in the IRS. Right. So. Right, man. That's uh, That's what it is. You know, like you know it. You know, like that's exactly what it is, man. You know, because any anybody else, they like, yo, all right, we ready to work with you, nah, nah. We trying to get you in jail. We look at you just like we look at Capone. Okay, how can we get him? It don't matter. Like once we get him, once we get him in there, we can, you know, do- see the books ain't straight. So, you, if you're not in position to rectify things, you you, it's like Joe Lewis, they. They went, got him for tax evasion. Yeah. Uh, I think I was, who knows. Oh, man, I forgot what we were talking about. But anyway. I we are talking about Al Capone and tax evasion. Right, right. And how the government, like once they. Find out you got money. Right. They automatically. <clears throat> And you and you're not paying your fair share. They're gonna come at you hardcore. So make sure you pay your fair share, so you don't have to deal with that. Right. And they criminalize you, man. You know, just we don't know if it's just if it's a a status thing. Like, yo, man, he came up too quick. If it's just like, yo, we can get him. You feel me? Yeah. Because they know. Like, look, if you're a new celebrity, you new to money, you don't know. It's not like you're trying to be deceitful and you're, you know, just trying to evade them. Mm-mm, just pay your taxes. That's all. That's, that's all I can say. Man. You know, so pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. That's all I can tell you, bro. Because they're they gonna get theirs. Yeah. So yeah, man. But uh, <clears throat> so. All in all, what did you what did you give this episode of the Thrones? It, to me, it was somewhat mundane, you know, because I'm I'm expecting I'm still waiting for the Lannisters to be opened up a can of whoop ass. You know why are you the king? Why right. are you playing around? That shows you the weakness of the family now. Right. Okay. That would have never happened if the father was alive. You saw what he did? They went to war because D- Jamie was in, imprisoned. He pulled right. all his forces together. Where are your forces at? You, 
Okay, you're going to have people uproar. Okay, you get past it. You get in the way, we cut your head off. You collateral damage. You've you got to be decisive. Once they figure out they can punk you, they're going to continuously punk you. Right. Okay? They're going to punk you. Like, what's that boy name up in um, the boat, boy? Oh, Ramsey. Ramsey. Ain't nobody punking him. He, <laughs> this is how bad he is. He killed his own daddy. Right. He said, ain't nobody punking you in my Ramsey. Way. Like, like, yeah. Man. But he going to die. Right. You know, I don't care how tough you are, you're going to die. Because, yeah. um, let's see, the girl probably keep him, kill him herself. Oh, all right. Uh, Stanza. Yeah. I am not your queen. Yeah. <laughs> this will not be easy. Right. This will be somewhat painful. <laughs> or yeah. either the big giant lady going to kill him. Kill him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Her. She's like, yeah. yeah. It's definitely going to be a woman, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the Lannisters, they definitely lost it, man. They, they shadows of themselves. And the boy shows that the king shows what they are. The, the one who died, he was so bad that the grandfather had to take a step back. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, and that's, that's an interesting point that you bring, that, like, each ruler, each king... That they had, which, you know, they only had Joffrey, and now they got Tommen. But it's a reflection of their house. Like, when Joffrey was the king, people were afraid mm-hmm. of the Lannisters. That's that's the position. That's the aura that the Lannisters had. Yep. But now with Tommen, and like you said, the dad is dead. But with, as with Tommen, it's showing that people just don't care. And and the sad thing is, Y'all push the over. mother did it. Right. Okay. And I keep saying, that which I bestow upon you, I can take back. And that would be my words. There's no debate, no discussion. If my wife ain't out here in the next 10 minutes walking out this door with me, I'm going to put all y'all on pikes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Except have all y'all heads. I'm, no, I'm going to impale you. Right. I'm going to stick it up your butthole and let it come out <laughs> through your neck, through your mouth. I don't care where it come. Right. But you're going to be on a pike. <laughs> King Finn, like, look, man. You no, know, man, you can either respect me or fear me. You got the choice. Right. right. Like, they would have never got you. my wife. Huh? <laughs> like, they would have never even got my wife. Like, nah. Because you figure, like, Cersei, back when she was the queen, she stayed with guards. She stayed with the with the king's guards. Yeah. Or the or the queen's guards. Yeah. How you, it backfired on her. So, like, nah, Marjorie. Yeah. Like when Marjorie were, was went to go see her brother or during the trial, mm-hmm. she's supposed to have Queen's guards with her. Yeah. Like so when they came to do something, they nah, homie, like, nah. Now cut your hand out. Shit. Right, right. Loris, walk outside. It, it, and everybody just leave like look. I nah. mean, I, I don't know if, if I don't know if it's with intent to show this weakness. But they weak, man. Right. The the Lannisters are weak. And what I mean, there's nobody. It don't matter because the dragons is coming. Because she's taking hers back. She's taking her. She truly, they are the rightful. Heir, she's the rightful heir to the throne. No, period. She took it, huh? Like the Targaryens took it. She, yeah, she gonna take it back. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. It's not like whoever can take it is the rightful. You keep like, what you kill, right? I mean, they took it from somebody. Somebody took it from well, them. They gonna go take it again. You know, but, and that's the thing, man. Like, if she's the bad guy, then she will, she will come and she will be a problem and, and the rest of the people will kill her. If she's a good guy, she won't even worry about Westeros. She'll go to the mountain, I mean, up to, you know, the wall and mm-hmm. just the long winter and, uh, and they'll die. She, she like, ain't got to go up there. Like, you know. She, all she had to do is stay down there where she at. Y'all bring y'all Happy butts down there in the south, where it's nice, warm, and toasty. We'll we'll melt you. Right, but if you know if all those lands, if she control and she's the ruler of the seven kingdoms. I mean, she has to protect the seven kingdoms, and you know, dragon go over there. Right, but you know, look, <sighs> yeah, but, wreak havoc upon them. Yeah, but you know, feast. It's not going to be that easy. Like them dragons are going to die. Like. The reason the way they died in the past is amongst each other. Like the Targaryens were fighting each other 
and they were killing each other's dragons. Dragons was killing dragons. Okay, well, that's not going to happen with these three. They're they family, unless the two going to fight that one. That's the only way something's going to happen. Right. The two are going to team up against the one. Right. Like, Danny with Drago and Tyrion with the other two uh-huh. will, you know, fight. And, you, yep. know, you know, but that's my thing. Like, one of these characters, either Jon Snow or Danny, will, become, will be the villain. Well, here's the thing. If, if if it's what we think it is, then Tyrion and John are half brothers. Right. Oh no, they they would be they would be half brothers because no, nah. the king was bopping the Lannister. Right. And but the his king, son, but the king's son is allegedly made John. Okay. So that then that would be then their cousins. Right, they would be like, yeah, uncle and nephew or whatever, or cousins, or because yeah, because because the king Tyrion would be the yeah, so the uncle, so Tyrion would be John's uncle, mm-hmm. and uh, if you know, if both of them are half Targaryen, and then Danny would be his sister. Danny would be Tyrion's sister, half sister. So yeah, yeah, that but you know, definitely there are some more Targaryens in the in the world. <laughs> yeah. And uh yeah, man. Like it's it's definitely gonna be interesting. Uh any predictions for this next episode? I don't know the name of it. It well, usually I, helps. Well, based on what I saw mm-hmm. the previews, um those um those walkers up there. Ice walkers, whatever they call them, mm-hmm. they're going to run in with that boy. <laughs> I wonder what happened to that guy. I guess we're going to, because remember the girl was like, wake up, wake up. Like she couldn't wake him up. Mm-hmm. So I guess something happened with the guy because both we, of them had to go together. You feel me? But, like he just can't go by himself. But, but he he's going to have to come back by himself because he remember he said, if you stay, if you stay there too long, you'll get lost or something. You get lost in there. So they probably going to jump on that old guy. Kill him, you think? Because well, what you have to understand is they're not physical. They're projecting, they're astral traveling or projecting their images into right. those, to those. That's why people can't see them. Like the Matrix? No, or Matrix is... ain't nothing like this. The Matrix is just you are plugging your yourself into. A simulation that everyone else is plugged into. Right. But this, this is totally different. This, this is totally different. That's mechanical. The Matrix is mechanical. And what they, in the Matrix, what they were doing was they were using human beings as batteries, as a power source, because the humans blotted the sun out. They, you know, it was a permanent cloud over the Earth. So there was no way for the machines to produce power. So they came up with the bright idea of turning human beings and making them into batteries. You know, and to keep them pacified, they would plug them into the matrix. You know, they dream. They think they're really there. They give them steak. And there's really nothing but other human beings that's been grounded up. Because that's what they was doing. When you die, they grind you up and feed you back to them. Right. So. So, but with uh, with Bran and um, Dark Raven or whatever his name is. What he's doing, he is projecting. What are they doing? How would you characteristic rise or did you see characterize what they're doing? Okay, did you see a Christmas Carol? Yes. Remember how Ebenezer Scrooge was taking him in? He had four visitors, spirits, and he would go into the past. That's all homeboy is doing. He's taking. He, he stole from a Christmas story. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas Carol. Carol. Yeah. That's funny. Well, do his flashbacks. Yeah, that's what that's what he's doing. He's taking them. He's taking them to places, just like they did in um. But in that, in the Christmas Carol, like, like you were saying, like he is, like if someone was projecting to this time right now, he right? projected them to the back, to the past, right? Things you could have done, right? So then, what is it like? The reason why we couldn't see them right now, if they were here projecting just watching us do mm-hmm. this podcast we could not see them because of what like what is it because they are from the future and the future doesn't exist in the past 
in their mind, like, so is it their their mind is here observing, just watching, watching it unfold, or? The, I, I guess you can say that, but you have, again, you have to understand, the boy wasn't even born yet when he was calling his father. Right. Right. Okay. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, is it like a picture? You know how, like, we, we look at a picture and, but. It's a hologram. Right. So it's like a 3D Hologram. It's like a 3D mm-hmm. picture. And yeah. so they're, they're looking at these, like, 3D pictures, you know, oh. but, they are, but they are in it. Right. You know, because that's the thing. Like, if you think of it like the Matrix, like you said, the Matrix is a, is a simulation that all of these people are plugged into mm-hmm. projecting themselves. Into a scene. Into it. And it was created. But, you know, the Matrix created this character. So when you jack into it. You know, the Matrix has your character created, you know. Mm-hmm. So now you are in it, you can... You're being you know, broadcasted into right. it. But well, see, with this, what they're doing... is spiritual traveling. All right. Okay. So their spirit, their essence is there. Right. But because it has already been written, they can't interact. Like, you can't remember, knock anything remember, over. Remember he said you can't... It's, it's already burned and, and right. dried already, ink. You, yeah, can't, you, ink. Can't, you can't change anything. Right. But... But no, maybe he can. <laughs> but see, he don't know. Right. Cause see, the boy, the, the, if the boy can call his father and he, he it's not what you think it is. Right. You right. know, the rules, the, this boy can change the rules. So. Like Danny with that fire. Like. Yeah. The rules are, the rules ain't the same no more. <laughs> so the the mere fact that them creatures was looking at him like, yo, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually see you. You don't even exist yet, but I can see you. <laughs> right. You know, and yeah. again, it's a, it has to be a holographical image because the boy can't walk. Right. So all it is is his projecting his, his himself spiritually as he thinks he should be into those situations. And, and you it's like it's like you 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 you're dreaming. You're in dream state, but you're not cuz right. you and, and we'll see. Cause like, you remember the, the the creatures, the people just walked through them like they wasn't there. Remember? In the um, in which one? One of the episodes where he was, they looked straight through him and said, you. "Oh, yeah, yeah." When they were talking about Hodor or yeah. Willis, Hodor, right? So they didn't Hodo. even see him, right? right. Hodor. <clears throat> okay. Hodor. Right. Hodor. I think Hodor was his horse, and his horse kicked him in the head, All right. and it messed him up. And he was like, Hodor, no, Hodor, Hodor. And, and then, and then the, they killed Hodor, and he was mad. Hodor, why you kill Hodor? Hodor, right? He didn't hurt me. Hodor. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna be crazy. Just that—that's a mystery. You feel me? Like people want to know. And you know what? What it's, happened to him? Who cares? Right. I don't. I do. I like Hodor. I don't. Like what happened? I don't. You know? Some dumbass brought playing horsey to to a cripple. <laughs> What happened to Hodor? Oh, Hodor. Hodor. I want to see the Lannisters get theirs, and I, <laughs> then I want to see the Lannisters die. So yeah. the next episode, you got, uh, we're going to run in with the, with the White Walkers or whatever they're called, yeah. and we're going to learn, what do you think we're going to learn from that encounter? How they, how they got started. What, what, what force created them? That's what we need to know. You know, why do they exist? What do they want? I mean, why do they take baby boys and turn them into white walkers, too? Because, see, they're not dead. They turn them into white walkers. The, the other people are actually physically dead. That's why they decompose like they do. Right. The horses are actually dead. That's why they could decompose. And they're showing you those animals for a reason. Like you said, they may get one of those dragons. There may be some dead dragons there that they ain't brought out yet who spit ice right. versus the ones who spit the fire. So we'll see, you know, because yeah. we saw them riding a horse. So that they do things on this show for a purpose. Right. Okay. So if they're riding dead horses, they can ride dead elephants, dead dragons, dead deads, whatever. Right. And see, man, I think, and he, George, he likes to make, you know, bad characters go through these changes where they turn out and you kind of feel like, okay, 
they're not so bad. And I, and I think that he's going to do that with the White Walkers. But it's like, will he have enough time to truly develop to where we feel kind of like, yo, man, the Night's King is really a good guy. He's just, you know, looking for, maybe he's, you know, he's looking for his betrothed. Well, shit, or maybe if we, let's explore. Maybe that's how John came back because one of the night, the, the, the king of the night walk, ice walkers, let him come back. He overheard the guy, girl say, please. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Right. There may not be nothing but him. Right. Because all he do is raise his hand and they come up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, look. Yeah. And, Thanks. Thanks for increasing my army. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Good look. I owe you. Good looking out. <laughs> good looking out. I'm going to get you next. <laughs> Cause see, John and him, they, they John and him right. stare each other down. Yeah, I brought uh, you back because we ain't done yet. Yeah, John don't want none of that. <laughs> John I'm like, yo, I don't know. Maybe if I can get close enough, I can hit him with this sword that shatter him. But he don't know. He don't know what to do. He don't know what time it is. Right. It's, it's be interesting, and, and everything we're saying is speculation. But that's what makes yeah. it so much fun. I think, man. I think the next episode. At the end of the episode, they're going to reach, nah, at least by the end of the season, the White Walkers are going to reach the wall and, and overthrow. The, the, the wall. The wall. The north. Yeah. Well, take, that's that's going to be easy because up, they'll probably all they have to do is touch the wall and it'll shatter. But no, nah, they built the wall to keep them out. So I don't, I don't know if they'll be able I, I, to can, shatter I, the how, wall. How can you keep out... Because, see, they, they were destroyed. So they built the wall prior to them, be, after they were destroyed. Right, right. Or after. after they migrated back to the far north. So how I can't see how that wall going to keep them out. When when they touch something with those shafts, it freezes and shatters. And what's going to stop that wall from freezing and shattering? Yeah, but that's a lot of wall to shatter and come down. All you got to do is do your hole through there. Like John had said... Let's pour water down that passage and let it freeze. That's the only way we're going to keep them walkers out. Because they're going to get through them wooden doors. Right. They're going to walk through that palace, that 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 um that, that castle, whatever you want to call it, yeah. Black Castle. Yeah, Castle Black. <laughs> right, right. So I think my prediction for this season, I think at the end of the season, they're going to reach. Because I... I don't think they're going to reach it this season just because you got they got the war with the um the Lannisters war. Yeah. Jon Snow has a war at Winterfell, you know. They could they could it they could it that one. Excuse me. In one episode, 10 minute section. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they not. That that's going to be a big just judging from every they building right. They build up to a, a war. crescendo. Right. To they love their war. Yeah. You know, every season it's a it's a big, you know, fight, a big war scene. So I definitely, uh, and Danny with the uh, Darth Racky, you know, because she's going to, you figure, uh, they're probably not going to honor the terms that Tyrion is saying. They're not. Know? And she's going to come back with an open can of whoop ass. Okay, I asked him to do this. they like, they still funding the, the, the what you call yeah, them? Sons of the Harpy. Sons of the Harpy. Let's do them. Right. So I think, you know, she's going to use the Darthraki army on either three of those cities, all th- you know, like she's going to clean all of that up this season. Because she's she leaving anyway, remember? Right. She ain't staying. Right. She ain't staying. And really, if you, you think about it, if the Sons of the Harpy are actually being run by the ex, ex-slaves... What's going to stop them from start making slaves out of the owners? You know? Right. Because y- y'all dead. You can't produce. You can't have kids. Y'all been castrated. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. So they can't reproduce. So they're going to die off. So some kind of way they have to come to some some way of creating the only ones that's gonna be allowed to have kids is the females, and they, who are they gonna have kids with? The the the. Well, not all the guys are castrated. Just the all soldiers. the slaves. No, nah, the the soldiers, they were castrated, but all the men are not castrated. Okay. 
So yeah, all the slave men, like they, you know, they get it in and do their okay, thing. Okay, well, you can have a, you can have like ten women to to each guy. You, right, you, that's what you want. You know, you gonna have to travel around. Ten girls for every <laughs> girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. You really, really, Ten girls for every guy. Oh, man, we have too much fun. Doing yeah, that yeah, man, that's funny. Ten girls for every guy. Guy, <laughs> hundred guys for every girl over in China. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Ah, ah, it's my turn. <laughs> I, I, you took my turn. How can you take my turn? Ah, ah, ah. So yeah, man. She so, got pretty ankles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, uh, I make. My long prediction, I think my short term is, um, I think the Lannisters' plan is not going to go as as they want it to. Well, as far as, you know, what they were discussing, they're going to, uh, Terrell's army is going to come in right when Lady Marjorie or Queen Marjorie is tr- about to take her walk. They're going to go in, then the army is going to be there to prevent it and get her back, go back to the thing like, nah, man. No, you, you, I think they're going to sell, I think... We are going to have a trial by combat, but I think the Tyrells and the other Lannister, Kevin, I think they're just going to just like, look, man, we'll trade you. We'll give you Jamie and Cersei if you give us um, you give us Marjorie and, and her brother back. They, she can she's going to demand trial by ordeal. Right, right, yeah, she's going to demand that. But she has got that big giant guy that's going to fight for her. Right, right. But well, he's got gonna, to beat him. His brother, the Hound. They're going to have the Hound. The Hound going to come back. Right. He's going to come and back. He's going to kill his brother for, look what you did to my face. Right. Right. But see. But he's going to knock that off and it's going to be the midget's head. <laughs> 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 he's like, man, what did you do to my brother? And then he's going to like, <clears throat> kill he's going to try yeah, kill uh, High Sparrow and then they're going to kill him, you know. Yeah. Well, High Sparrow got to go because you, you, you're changing one dictator to another. With another, right. one extreme to another, one totally evil, one so quote unquote righteous that he's evil. Because okay, what did the girl do? All she did was says, "I didn't see my brother in a relationship." So what does she have to confess to? Right. Okay, what sins are you suggesting she? she he keeps saying he was sinful. If you saw on the show, he said that you know, I lived that lifestyle. That the rich and famous lived. Right. And I walked. Right. Yeah. So, okay, let he who's without the sin cast the first stone. Right. I know. Are, did you parade through the city did, naked? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> so yeah. Why, people spit on you, so why the f*** do they got to do it to me? <laughs> did, they, did they jack off on you? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens, bro. All right, man, so there it is. We uh, knocked out that Thrones. Uh, we had a good episode with um, with the guys, you know, so that's really good. I'm glad that uh, that they were here, LaRod Smalls and C. Anthony Parker. So, you know, that was awesome. Who were our sponsors? You cocksuckers. Well, if you did not forget, okay, we were brought to you by First, I want to say it was Weebly. So if you guys, if you want a website, you want to do this thing, you uh, want to take it to the next level, go to Weebly.com, sign up. You can get started for free. And if you like what you're doing, you like what who, someone else is, is doing for you, then you can go ahead and pay. If you're ready to pay, go to BowMiles.com, click on the Weebly link, even after you've created your free account. Once you're ready to pay, go to Bo Miles, click on the Weebly link, and then sign in. You'll be ready to rock and roll, roll and rock, rock and roll, Weebly.com. Also brought to you by Fidloo.com. Go there today 
We're still doing the fiddle challenge. You don't even play an instrument. Go pick up a bass, put strap it around your back, or just carry it in your arms. Walk through the mall, through the town center, through the supermarket, and watch what watch what happens. You're gonna be like uh, Bran when uh, when when those White Walkers see him. Like, Yo, <laughs> what, 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 can I get your autograph? <laughs> Yo, we we see you. I see you. <laughs> yeah, we see. Yeah, yeah, we see you, motherfucker. Yeah, we we see you. <laughs> we looking right at you. <laughs> Take the fit loop challenge. Be like Brand and let the White Walkers see you. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, advancedbkj.com. Go there, sign up, start learning jujitsu today. Hey, uh, we had our seminar. It was awesome. I was horrible, man. I haven't thought about jujitsu in so long. Like, I did horrible. Um, but, you know, that's what it's about, man. It's, you know, you uh, you just got to take them. You got to take the ass whippings as they give them. And hopefully, you know, you learn from them. So go to Advanced BKJ, sign up. We also have tournaments and things coming up. Um, our boy, Stipe Miocek, is now the UFC heavyweight champion. So when he comes down, we, we're going to definitely have him on the show. So, uh, you know, it'll be it'll be rough, I'm sure, because, you know, now that he's a champ, it's going to be rough. So I already know. It's, you know, so eventually we, we eventually we're going to get him down. So be definitely be on the lookout for that. He's a good dude, a real good guy. So I already know, like, it's going to happen. AdvancedBKJ.com. You know what it is. And we're out. Peace. I'm still